I am here right now because I want Cody Bellinger to be a Cub. I'm going to offer something that I never thought I would offer, and I'm nervous about this because I don't think you'll agree, but I'm going to do it. Cody Bellinger, because you're listening to this show, if you sign with the Chicago Cubs, on today's part of my take, we are back in studio. Good to see everyone. Some suntans. Did you get a little tan? I was out on the course. I got I got flushed. I got a little tan. Hank got a little tan, a little sunburn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake, you get a little sunburn? Yeah, a little bit, but I put on some sunscreen. Max is sick. I want to uh, get that golfer's tan. Was it Paul Azinger that had that one or Stuart Sink? With Stuart the, Sink. With a head that was just white? Yeah, you need a you need a bald head, though. Yeah, that one rocks. Well, just wait a couple years. Yeah. Uh, we have a great show, though. We're back in studio. We're going to talk maybe a little fix on the NBA All-Star game because people are very upset about it. Uh, hot seat, cool throne. Hank, are you debuting your top 10 Patriots? I have it. He has it. He's done it. Maybe we'll push it off now Good that we know you have it. Well, we I was well, I was going to say, I, I know, I didn't want to be unprepared, but maybe waiting till the end of the series. Okay, all right, might, so it might we'll change do it. Yeah, no, decisions. that's a good idea. Yeah, did, but I have my current one. But did you do this, or did you have somebody else help you out? I did it. He did it. Did all you right. put the lighthouse on, the old lighthouse? Maybe. That should be on the Not list. the old lighthouse. Uh, we have a great interview with our good friend Keith Yandel talking hockey. This is the week where we're catching up on all of our sports. We did NBA preview with Rasilla on Monday. We have Keith Yandel talking hockey today. I think we're going to have Titus do some college basketball preview on Friday. It's new life for this show. And then we also, at the end of the uh, episode, we're taking listener suggestions on life after football. So what what their plans are for what what to do with life without football? We should circle back too on on the things that we said that we were going to do after football was over last year. Oh, do we remember those? I have that list. All right, so yeah. we'll do that okay, at the good, end. Good. That's great. That's great. All right, before we get to all of it, DraftKings. We are presented by DraftKings. Are you all about the NBA action? Well, we are now. You've got to try Pick Six, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers can play just five bucks on their first pick set and get 50 in pick six credits getting started is simple just download the DraftKings pick six app and sign up with code take pick at least two hoops players and choose if they'll have more or less of a stat like will they score more or less than 30 points or have more or less than eight assists lock them in and compete against others for a shot at huge cash prizes download the DraftKings pick six app now and get started with code TAKE. New customers can play just 5 bucks to get 50 in Pick 6 credits. Only on Pick 6 from DraftKings with code TAKE. The crown is yours. This is an awesome contest. Go check it out. 5 bucks. You can play and you can get up to 50 in Pick 6 credits. So download that DraftKings app right now. The DraftKings Pick 6 app. And use code TAKE when you sign up. And make sure you're playing with DraftKings. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings. Go download the DraftKings Pick 6 app right now and get started with code TAKE. Today is Wednesday, February 21st, and the boys are back in studio. The boys are back. The boys are back. The boys are back. Kind of rocks being back in the studio. Not going to lie. I'm a faded out. Guess who just got back today? Remember when it was Rex Ryan and Rob Ryan walking together? Yeah. They played that song. That was the coolest fucking video ever. Uh, we're back. We're back. It is a, uh, great to be back from vacation. Everyone feels rested. Well, I did feel rested, Big Cat, until I watched the NBA All-Star game. Oh. And, man, did I expect more out of that one. Puke. Uh, so I actually didn't watch the NBA All-Star game. I did not I, either. I've never felt smarter in my entire life. Went back, watched all the highlights, of which there were one or two. Uh, uh, the highlight was really Adam Silver after the game telling the – it was the Eastern Conference one – uh, congratulations on, I guess, scoring the most points tonight. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I thought so. So there was that highlight, but the real highlight for me uh, was Bob Ryan tweeting, "If you're not personally offended by uh, by this," he wrote, "But, but, 
but I assume he meant by. If you're not personally offended by this disgraceful farce taking place right now in Indy, you don't love or understand basketball. These quote unquote all stars should be censured. And they're and where are the coaches? Have any of them have any pride? They're all acting like athletic court gestures. I love that. I, I would like to see a coach try to get players to play in the all star game. Like have them do uh, suicides before the game. Have them go out there, run three man weave. Like, let's get, come on, let's lock in, do a full court press. Yeah, well, the, the, w- there's another one. He had one earlier that I missed. Uh, he said, once again, these NBA stars are showing no respect for the game. It's another dunkarama and three point farce. Not a single hand in anyone's face. I'll see how TCM is doing. See you next year. What a waste of time. Adam, you must do something. It's embarrassing for your sport. Adam. Adam Silver, though, he kind of – is he the number one cuck uh, commissioner now? Yeah, he doesn't do shit. He, well, he just gets bullied by everyone. Yeah, that's his job. I mean, Roger Goodell, he does get bullied, but he gets bullied by the owners. Do you know what Adam Silver's biggest problem was? Was timing. Timing is everything in life. He came in and was commissioner, and you remember what happened right when he was commissioner? Was, I think he was like two months in. It was Donald Sterling. Mm. And he banned him for life, and everyone was like, this fucking guy rocks. He gets it. He is the best. And it's been all downhill from there. Yeah. He literally, like, you can't, you got to wait for those easy wins. He should have, you know what he should have done? He should have said, we're going to wait and see with Donald Sterling. Put it in his back pocket, waited till there was an all-star, uh, you know, crisis at hand. And mm-hmm. then been like, oh, yeah, that Donald Sterling guy, is he even still alive? Is he? Uh, no. I think he is. No, I think he's dead. Boom, he's suspended for life. Yeah, he alive. Should, he should have waited. Oh, really? Hide. 89. 89. Oh, According he's, to Wikipedia. He's got that. When Donald Sterling dies... Adam Silver should release a statement that just says, good, Yeah, Adam Silver. Remember when I banned him? Yeah. Uh, anytime we mention Donald Sterling, we have to read the transcript from his 2003 deposition. And also, big Magic Johnson. Big what did he ever do? So he here, got eight. Here's Donald Sterling's words from this deposition, 2003, former owner of the Clippers. Well, I fool around sometimes, I do, when a girl seduces me and tells me all these hot stories and dirty things and tells me how much she wants to suck on me and takes my shoes off and licks my feet and touches me. When I'm in a limousine, she takes off all her clothes. The limo driver said, what's going on? And she starts sucking on me on the way to Mr. Coon's house. And I thank her. I thank her for making me feel good. (laughs) Then the lawyer, sir, the question was, is this your handwriting? Love it. (laughs) It literally was Michael Scott deposition. It rocks. Yeah, in real life. But I I have some fixes for the All-Star game. I do too. Okay. Uh, go, go ahead. First. No, you go ahead. Hey, go ahead. I have some some that are not going to work. But hey, Hank, you go ahead. You go ahead. You got a fix? All right. My first fix is uh, on the losing team, one person dies. That's a good fix. You don't think they would try hard? It's like the lottery. Yeah. Yeah. We just do a we, – we just take names out of a hat right after. It's like, oh, Luca, sorry, you're dead. Yeah. Or the mystery knife would play, too, in that circumstance. It would be great. Yeah, that's a good idea. That one's a little – I understand that one probably is going to... We're going to need to get a little bit further in the crisis to get that one enacted, but don't rule it out. It would kind of rock, though, if LeBron's team lost and then the players vote on who gets killed. Yeah. And they vote LeBron off. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I saw you had a similar idea to this, Big Cat, but we talked about this for the Pro Bowl game because we fixed the Pro Bowl, too. Yeah. And the solution to that was uh, one or all the players on the winning team get to hit free agency one year early. Yeah, and I did the reverse where all... all if you play the NBA All Star Game, losing team has one player that can never be an All Star again. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so it's like they, they that loses out on cash. Ban them. Yeah, uh, winning I'll, team gets to dress the losing team. Uh, I like that. Year. I like that. I had some rest of the year ones. Uh, losing team can't tie their shoes for the rest of the season. Okay, that's cool. That'd be pretty funny. Losing team has to fly Southwest for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Southwest is fine. I flew it this morning. Hank disagrees. Southwest. Not not for NBA players. Yeah, true. Barbaric. Uh, what about this? What about the Richard Mendenhall rules? What, what if we make the All-Star game white versus black? Oh, okay. So who's the white starting five? Luca, Luca, Caruso. Jokic, Caruso. Chris Stapps. Chris Stapps. Pay- Grayson Allen. Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard. <coughs> Mac McClung. Mac McClung. That, I'd put that five up against. Oh, there's got to be a Plumley out there. And then who's on the other team? Everyone else. Yeah, literally everyone else. Uh, how about... How about this one? This one would actually be really brutal. Losing team has to be the video crew for LeBron's farewell tour. Okay, yeah. They can't play basketball for at least a year, probably two. Um, I also, this one would be fun. Losing team uh, draws out of a hat, and the loser, that person's team, has to give Darko 20 minutes a a game for the rest of the season. Okay. Let's get Darko back in. Yeah, sure. What the fuck? (laughs) Well, if Darko was getting 20 minutes on the Bucks for the rest of the season? He might be great. We don't know. I have a real one, though, Okay, that I actually think would work. I I got another one. Okay, go ahead. You go. This kind of straddles the line of real and maybe not real. 
what if the number one team in college basketball got to play against the All Stars? Mm, because they, they'd at least try. They would try. They would have to try. They would because try. like the threat of being embarrassed by the number one team. That's true. That would be enough to make the guys actually go out there and do something cool. I saw some people saying they should do U.S. versus the world. That would be good. I mean, maybe you'd have a little bit of pride. Yeah. Uh, but I had – so the problem is the in-season tournament, not only does it have, you know, the, you win a championship in Vegas, but there money, there's money involved. People are saying, well, we need to get money involved in the All-Star game. The problem is, though, the All-Star game, money involved, all those guys get paid so much money. The, the in-season tournament works because – the stars are playing for the last guy on the bench. Like I remember, wasn't it the Pacers were in the final of it, mm -hmm. and it was like three or four guys are making you know ten million dollars a year, but everyone else is getting paid nothing. So they're playing for half a million dollars. That means something. What if it was losing team, or sorry, winning team gets money out of the losing team's pocket, but we went one further. So the losing team literally has to pay the winning team. Mm -hmm. So now you, it's money out of your pocket. Losing team has to pay winning team ten thousand dollars per point. Oh, because now you play defense. Yeah, you play defense, and it doesn't matter if you're losing. You Correct. still keep trying. Yeah. Correct. Not a bad idea. Right. And, and you have to pay them in one dollar bills. Yeah. And it takes. But place Dame would have gotten uh, five hundred thousand dollars. He scored fifty, right? Yeah. Did he? Was it? Was it fifty? I thought I thought he scored fifty. Did he not score thirty nine. I mean, I know, he scored a lot of points. We didn't watch the game. We didn't watch the game. Uh, so it's good for us because we can't get upset about it. Trey Young and Donovan Mitchell actually had a, a decent idea. I think that would probably work. They told this to Rachel Nichols after the game. They said, get an MC out there. Mm. So have a guy like at the end one mixtape or like at Rucker Park that's on the court narrating the game as it happens. Roasting them. Yeah, roasting, roasting you if you get crossed up. Oh, what if, what if the winning team immediately after the game – uh, had to go, and in the back room, it was Club Shay Shay, and they got to just bash the losing team. I like that, yeah. That would be bad. Good idea. That would be very bad. What if you had Ben Simmons, and he's just shooting on a hoop out to the side, and he has to score 100 points on his own, only three-pointers, uh, in the time that it both teams have to get over 100 points? He, he wouldn't. The other, what do you mean? So, like, he's on a hoop all by himself. Right. The other two Not teams scoring. are playing each other. Right. And he has to score a hundred points. On oh, his own. so it's a challenge for Ben Simmons. Challenge for Ben Simmons. Yes, ben I like Simmons it. can can beat the two teams to hundred. Cannot. Points. He cannot. Probably what not. if the game doesn't end till they hit forty one free throws in a row? Oh, he'd still be there. They'd be there forever, unless they got Scott Morris from UNH. Shout out or uh, Spencer. Was that the guy's name? The Spencer the Ringer. The Ringer. Ringer. Yeah, the, yeah. Ringer. Yeah, the, the Ringer. Ringer guy. By the way, we have shirts. Hank, go grab one of the shirts. We have the forty one free throw shirts. I don't know about you guys, but I. Uh, I don't think I said this on Sunday's pod, but I got to Mexico and I got to the house and I immediately slept for eight more hours. Yeah. I was like, it was first day of vacation. I was like, I'm going to do some more sleeping. Yeah. You forget how much an all nighter takes away your entire world. Yeah. Like you don't feel like you're alive for about two days. And you, and you convince yourself you're not tired and then you like close your eyes for one second and eight hours go by. Yeah. I'll yeah. 41 free throws. Awesome. I really do think that the paying the, the losing team paying the winning team would work because guys don't want to lose money. And especially if you if you tied it into the point total, guys would play defense. But at the end of the day, who cares, right? I mean, it's the NBA All Star. Game. Yeah, if you expected anything besides this, I the only reason why you might be expecting something different was Adam Silver did say I think in November that like we're not going to have an embarrassing All Star game. You're going to be entertained. Yeah. So that was a fucking lie. And he just again the those players run his life. Mm -hmm. Like oh yeah. We're going to make it even more embarrassing. But, yeah, the, other than baseball, I know hockey, people were saying the hockey has done a better job, but, like, baseball is the only all-star game that really – and that even has lost a little bit of its allure because it used to be, dating ourselves, when there wasn't interleague play, it was like, oh, fuck, I can't wait to see this matchup. We'll never see this matchup again. Yeah. Uh, but he, baseball still has a little bit of allure because you get to, guys are still throwing hard and trying to hit. Yeah, football just gave up. Yeah, they did, which was, smart, which was smart. Because now no one expects anything out of them. Yeah. The, the NBA should just give up. Why? Give why? Up, it's way easier to give up. It's way easier to give up. Then people can't complain. The football one, they get the advantage because it's the end of the year. Yeah. But I think even I know, basketball, they would Basketball, you could just tie it in the in-season tournament, do that later in the year. Yeah. I really think the money thing is the only thing to save, and it can't be that the winning team gets money. It has to be tied into the losing team losing money because, the, like I said, the, all the guys are getting paid a ton of money. I don't, think, 
I don't think if you said $100,000 to every winner on the All-Star team, yeah, obviously $100,000, but like some of these guys are making $55 million a year. What do they care? Yeah. It's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to try way harder now. What if all of the All-Stars you get you get selected? Because the other thing with the contracts is like that's built into your contract if you make All-Star teams. Right, that's what you I'm saying. That's money. why you should lose one, one person should never be All-Star again. What if every All-Star has to volunteer a player on their behalf and then it's for money? Oh, I like that. If this guy's got to pay. No, this guy or this guy gets paid. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. So they're playing then you for get that your game. the last guy on your bench. You're like, I want to get him paid, but yeah. you also have to work with your other all stars on like getting the best team together so your team can win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we fix the all stars. Or if it was money, what if it was money that got paid to whatever college you went to if you went to college? Because a lot of those guys they like gassing up their alumni. Yeah, I think a lot of them don't. You don't think so? Well, they only went for like a year. A lot of them. Yeah. I think Zion's playing for the Brotherhood Yeah, still. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely still playing Absolutely. for the Brotherhood. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Um we the other the other thing that came out of this weekend, the NBA weekend, is Doc Rivers is really unlikable. Yeah. Holy I, I, shit. What'd you use a snake? He so he uh had the balls to after taking someone's job and saying he wasn't he was working for the Bucks as an analyst, took the job, took Jeff Gundy's job, and then uh, was like, yeah, I'm good with his announcer stuff. I'll be the Bucks head coach, and we'll fire Adrian Griffin, whatever, 40 games into the season. Doc Rivers had the balls to say uh, it was a tough time for him to take the job. He said, taking a job when you're about to go on the toughest road trip of the season is not the smartest decision. I even told them that, can we wait till All-Star break? You know, it would have been a lot nicer. Yeah, it would have been nicer for sure. <laughs> what the it would have been great. You get, you get like a month of prep time. Uh, yeah, good job, Doc. You got the you got the job. You can't complain about a job that you you stabbed somebody in the back for. He also had a uh, he. I'm pulling it up. He had a uh, quote where it actually sounded like when Dave does his bit with excuses, like not to make excuses, then rattles off a bunch of excuses. Listen to these. Listen to Doc River explain the 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 start he had with the Bucks. Yeah, just, you know, the Utah game, you, you kind of knew, you know, altitude, back-to-back. Um, I mean, the, the, whoever scheduled a Dallas-Utah have never been on an airplane in their life, you know, <laughs> uh, or no time zones, you know. So <laughs> that was just a tough one. We knew that. Um, I guarantee you when they looked at that before the year started, they were like, this this was going to be a brutal game for us. Uh, end of a trip, legs, you can just see it. <laughs> We've got a lot of injuries right now, so guys are playing more extended minutes. I think that's probably – and you know what? Flu season, El Nino. Yeah. So he went, he went uh, altitude, schedule, time zones, fatigue – Injuries, defense. That's about it. The In thirty boxes. seconds, it's a royal flush. All. Yeah, yeah. There's not really. You could. I've heard people throw El Nino into a lot of shit. He should have put that in there. Just you know, played. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Like going. Uh, it's a leap year. Going, we got extra days this month. Going from Dallas to Utah. Everybody knows time zones and altitude. You go from Dallas to Utah. You might as well be going through hell. It's the toughest road trip in America. That's really hard. <laughs> what else do you want us to do? Dallas to Utah. Next, you're gonna say Sacramento. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, Doc Rivers, good job coming back and, and really making everyone be like, wait, why do we, why do we, why do people like this guy? Yeah, I don't like Doc. Yeah. Hank? I mean, he's a championship winning coach. What's not to like? Um. All right. What else do we got going on in the sports world? Pitchers and catchers did report. Yeah. And there's a bunch of, there are a bunch of baseball players that aren't signed yet. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't know one of my hot seats. I don't know what's going to happen with that. All right. We'll, we'll save it for we'll hot seat it. cool throne. Um, I'm excited about baseball, though. I'm excited about baseball excited. as well. Dingers only? Yeah, oh yeah, we're doing Full dingers season? only again. Yeah, no sure. hit by pitches. No hit by pitches, just dingers. So we should set a date. Yeah, we'll set a date. Yeah, uh, let's say June. Oh, we're 20th. gonna do mid season. Well, we don't have to do the start of the yeah, season. Yeah, not the start. What of the season. are you saying? Cold. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. gonna do the start of the season. Also, what's gonna be an interesting twist is we're gonna have to figure out how to uh, disable notifications on our phone for every player that we had hitting home runs oh, last yeah, year. Yeah, I just got a Brandon Lau injury update. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. So we can do Fourth of July, one of the episodes again. We should be able to keep one guy though. Keep uh, a keeper league. A keeper league. <laughs> yeah, you get to keep one dinger. You know what we should do is we should draft. This is what we should do: is we should draft our team before opening day. And every week you get to add one guy to your active roster till we get the full roster. <laughs> I so, like that. So you have to guess. Yes, yeah, you have one to, guy that you. Yes, yeah, so you have to guess. Time. That's a, that's a nice way to it also eases like in, yeah. yeah ease in. First week you're just rooting for one dude to go yard. Second week you got two guys you yeah. can keep track of. Yeah, it's like the Royal Rumble of Dingers only. Uh huh. Opening day in South Korea, March 28th. 
who cares? Mm. <laughs> oh, wait. In <laughs> They're playing in oh, South okay. Korea. Oh, okay. I think you said opening day for South Korea. I was like, who cares about that? <laughs> Dodgers, Padres, oh. in South Korea. Oh, sorry. March twentieth. March twentieth. All right. Well, we're That's not going to be doing that. What kind of time zone is that going to be? That's literally. Isn't that first day of March Madness? Yeah, right. That's around really there. stupid. Great job, baseball. But, yeah, but, uh, that, way to they're go, a week baseball. before everyone else. So March twenty eighth is everyone else. What should the, what should what should the punishment be this year? Mm. I like something baseball related. Yeah, it was good. This year's punishment was good. Just run it back. Run it. We could run it back. We could also do you get get a hit, hit by a ninety mile an hour fastball. Mm. That'd be fun. That sounds fun. <laughs> that does sound fun. Maybe you have to just like face a college pitcher until you can. Oh, we should. You know what we should do is we should run it back, but the loser also has to bat. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think facing against a college pitcher would be yeah that'll be terrifying. Yeah, the loser has to be Shohei. Yeah, and you have to keep taking at bats until you get a base hit. Yeah. Oh, that will take forever. Maybe we won't put in that stipulation. We'll we'll we'll, we'll refine it. But yeah, I like doing. I think we should run it back. No, uh, let's do that. You got to get a hit. Shut up, Max. You're sick. Just, you're, I'm fine. No, I mean you're sick in the head. Oh, okay. Yeah, and a baseball. And and a baseball. You're so sick. Uh, Hank, do you want to do your top ten Patriots? Yeah. So this could change. Yeah, because I I said I would do it. We were debating it, and then I was watching the first two episodes of, I'm sorry, Dynasty. <laughs> I've, I've heard, and I haven't watched it yet, but we'll, we'll all watch it so that we can review it together. But I've heard the crafts are spin zoning stuff. Uh, like, that's just what the tweets have seen. They're heavily featured that's, in You it. just listen to Kirk. They're, no, that wasn't just Kirk. Kirk did say it, but I've seen tweets, too, being like, I think Simmons even said the crafts were spin zone. That Kirk's, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't around, obviously. My first... Mem like watching it, I was like, "Holy shit!" I was literally nine years old when this started. Uh, people are saying that they made it seem like the Patriots were really bad before Brady, and they actually weren't with Parcells and Pete Carroll. It was stuff. a Super Bowl, yeah. yeah. So they they do focus a little bit on the crafts, and it's told from his point of view, kind of. But you have to almost tell it from his point of view because he's the one that made the decisions, right? Like bringing in Belichick, and then Belichick deciding Drew Bledsoe or Tom Brady, and then Kraft like signing off on that. And trusting him. So, like, you do have to tell his side of the story. By far, my favorite part of it so far is Ernie Adams. You get so much Ernie oh, Adams already. And Ernie Adams... Um, he might be on a white whale list of ours. Yeah. He's a, he's a very interesting guy. So, he's driving out of his house, which is a very nice house. Dude drives a Subaru. Of course. He's like a classic Subaru. Of Love course. that guy. Yeah. It's, I wouldn't expect him to drive anything else. That it would be either a Subaru or, like, a Corolla. Yeah. Nothing like more. Like 1997 Toyota Camry. Yeah, bro. nothing more. It's going to be painful waiting week in and week out uh, for all the episodes. I think there's 10 episodes. There's only two out right now. And I think after this week, it goes one by it, one by dude, one. Dude. Hurts. That's... I was, our I brains was, have I was been... I I was fiending. watching this. Night. Yeah, I started watching this new show on Hulu, and I watched the first two episodes and realized that it was every week, and mm -hmm. it devastated me, because I cannot remember week to week anything. Yeah. I need to be able to binge. I actually think what the streaming services should do because when you binge, you you watch it so fast you don't remember anything. But when it's week to week, you watch it so slow you don't remember anything. They need to basically put like we're uh, a bunch of like Labradors trying to eat our food out of a bowl, the spiral bowls. It should be like once you start an episode, you can watch three episodes in one day. Yeah, and then the next day you can watch three episodes. Yeah, I mean, so I, it's like a they basically control your binging. I, I started the the Patriots Dynasty show, and then when I got to the end of the, the available ones, I kept clicking on the third one, even though it said like coming out March third or whenever. And I was, yeah, I was like, no, that must be a mistake. Show me more. Do it, Netflix or more. Apple. Do a do a controlled binge so we can save ourselves from ourselves, but also. We can remember what the fuck's going on. Because you guys know when you binge something, you do those like you, you'll you watch like four episodes in one night and then be like, ah, fuck, I'll do. There's a cliffhanger. I'll watch the fifth mm -hmm. and barely remember it because you're falling asleep. Yeah. Give me three a day. Three a day would be perfect. Yeah. I need more. I need more stat. Uh, really, really well done. It only gets up to the snowball is the end of the second episode. So there's still a lot left. How many episodes tell. are there? Ten. So they haven't even won a Super Bowl in the first two episodes. No. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And like I said, that was I was I was nine. My first, you know, the beginning montage was really really good, and I was like, holy! Like first, it hurt a little bit because I realized I was like, damn, this is just history now. Mm -hmm. This is not. This was my life. This is what I lived every day, being like, oh, this is the best team in the world. During that montage, I was just like, oh, this is this is over. Like this is. 
Yeah. We're watching a documentary. This is this You're is all in the past. Back, yeah. I actually sad. I was thinking about this. Let me actually do an ad real quick that it works perfectly for this. If you're looking to go to a football game next year, or maybe you're going to college basketball, you're going to NBA, you're going to NHL. Uh, Game Time has you, the exclusive ticketing partner of uh, Barstool Sports. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. I've used it for everything. You can see your seat beforehand. If for some reason something happens to your ticket, they will make sure that you have a ticket in the exact same area. That happened to me for a Cubs game. Game Time took care of me. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code PMT. For twenty dollars off, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Hank, I had the, this question popped in my head because did Matthew Slater retire today? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe Jake, you can look it up. But how many Patriots on the current roster have a Super Bowl? Mm. Like that will be the moment when if they if you get to a point where it's because it has to happen at some point in the next couple of years. Where no one on that Probably team. Not that many. I was thinking about it like if they go, if it, say the Patriots went to the playoffs in two years and everyone's like, well, it's the Patriots. They're in the playoffs. Like, wait, but none of these guys have have been there for that. Yeah. It can't be a, mu- a bunch. Like linemen and yeah, like special teamers. Yeah. Cause I, th- they also cut a couple of guys and I was like, huh, I wonder, I wonder what the longest tenured Patriot is right now. Yeah. I probably David under Andrews? 10. I mean, David, David Andrews, Andrews, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, line, linemen. There. Memes credit. Lyman probably definitely do. I would say it's under 10. Yeah, that's crazy to think. And they released their whole coaching staff, and it was like all brand new faces. Uh, this documentary is one of the first times, maybe the first time, that I, I've watched a documentary about something where I remember <laughs> like every single minute of all this stuff happening. Like, yeah. I remember when Tom Brady came in for Drew Bledsoe. And, uh, uh, and Lynn Sanity. Lynn Sanity, yeah, yeah. But, no, but this is <laughs> no, the, no, I know what you mean. This yeah. is the first one yes. where I watch – like the clothes and technology yeah. that people are using during the the footage and I'm like holy shit that feels like it looks like that's the 80s yeah like 1999 in terms of the big ass like baggy white shirts and the, yeah. the jeans that they were wearing the giant khakis Even, they also had a hilarious clip of uh the sports reporter show yeah when it, like Bob Ryan was in it and I don't know Lupica and a couple other guys where they're just in over, that sh- oversized that, suits that show rocked. Yeah. and they're just sitting on a stage Cost and that was yeah. the show. John Sunday Saunders. morning yeah. before yeah. NFL yeah, yeah. countdown. It was just yeah. a just, hilarious. Like I remember the show vaguely, but just watching it now, being like, "Oh, this was like." They should bring get, that show. Do you want to get hot takes off? Just put four old guys in chairs on yeah. the stage. An NFL yeah. matchup was also in that yeah. early Sunday morning. Where, just schedule. four guys that are just like sitting in newsrooms, just pissed off at the world. Yeah, Collinsworth. Let him go free. There was some old vintage Collinsworth clips where he was saying like, "I don't think this is the right move to bench blood." So like, I don't know about this kid Brady and uh, Collinsworth had. Uh, a little bit less hair in the year 2000, oh, which is interesting. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. I sent you guys the chart of how the Patriots were built via the Patriots game notes. Uh, so aside from Slater, no one's been on the team prior to 2015. So, yeah, but there's that they won three Super Bowls or two Super Bowls. Right. Joe Cardona, is he still on the team? Th- that was This was as of this year. Got yeah, it. Lawrence Guy. He just got cut. Yeah. So that was that was what it was. It wasn't Slater. It was the, he got cut, and they were like, he's he was on the team for seven years. I was like, huh? I wonder. I wonder at what point you get to, like, no one left. Uh, okay, Hank, you ready? Yeah. There's only a f- there's only like six, right? Very few. Yeah. Very few. Okay. Ready, Hank? Yeah. You starting at ten or one? Ten. Do you want me to start? Six. Start ten. I want you to start at six. Let's go six to one. Ten nine eight seven. All right, uh, number six. <laughs> a lot, a lot of the defense, a lot Worst of the defense. Way to do a, list. a lot of the defense I took from uh, the early, the early dynasty. Okay, but this this one guy, two Super Bowls, you wouldn't have won without him. He stopped Marshawn Lynch on the one yard line, okay. basically arm tackled wow. the guy, then took him down. Wow. 
Wow. And he forced a fumble against the Falcons. Malcolm Butler. Dante Hightower. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> two two plays where like when you're watching, you're like, we need a miracle. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's number six. Number six. Wow. It's pretty high. Can't wait to see who's five, four, three, two, one. Should we just ten should, we, eight, nine, eight, should we seven, debut seven. this like one by one? <laughs> So we just do number six, tune in on Friday? Yeah, yeah, five. yeah, yeah. Okay. Number five will be on Friday. <laughs> Good start. Good start, Hank. Okay. Number six, Dante right. Hightower. We'll make a big thread out of it. That was huge. Yeah, Yeah, but then people are going to get in my head. But no, I, no, have, you all, have, your I list. have it locked in. Send it yeah. to Jake and he'll make sure it stays right. locked in. <laughs> <laughs> tune in Friday. This we get right number five. what you were saying about the Netflix thing. Yeah. yeah. No. be one thing and people are going to be pissed. This is, this is how you do off-season sports radio. Yeah. Okay? You, you drag everything out for as long as possible. Yeah. Like, this is going to be a month-long Hank's Top 10 Patriots ex- extra. And we're going to find out one, like... <laughs> We're gonna find out one and still have to do ten nine eight seven six. Wait, who do you think one, number one two, is, Big Cat? Three, four, five. Okay, that was six. Uh, I th- I, I'm very interested to see who number two is. Well, you well, sent me twelve. Oh, yeah. Well, one's a honorable mention and one's the lighthouse. I'll spoiler. Okay, but okay. that one doesn't really. The new one. Yeah, that hasn't won shit. We should have started with our honorable mentions. I only have one on the list. What's your honorable mention on Friday? We'll debut Dante Hightower. Um, he was just my favorite player as a kid, Bethel Johnson, kick okay. returner, okay, electric. Okay. okay, all right. That was uh, so so five five on Friday, five on Friday. All right, defense. Oh, Teddy Bruschi. No, Mike Vrabel. Nope. Vince Wilfork. Nope. Dale Revis. Nope. Albert Hainsworth. No. Malcolm Butler. <laughs> nope. Richard Seymour. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Willie McGinnis. Nope. Jared Mayo. Nope. He's been in Chris Long. both episodes. I haven't watched yet. He's been in both episodes. Owns property. Owns property. I think that's probably all. Oh, uh, Ty Law. Yeah. What? No, nope, but we, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. We don't know who it is. <laughs> Number five. Make, Friday. make him tune in. <laughs> Who's this? Four offense? Yep. Mm. Oh, that's got to be uh, Jules. Eric Gr- Receiver and recurring guest of the show. It's got to be Jules. Right. Cordero Patterson. It's Jules. <laughs> it's Jules. Dante Stallworth. So Gronk's two or three? He's got to be three, and then Brady's got to be two. No, Brady's one. Brady's one. Bill's two. Are these Bill's only players? No, no players only. Vrabel players two? only. Players only. Players okay. only. Okay. He wouldn't do Vrabel two. Oh, no, Vince Wolfork two. No. Nope. Gronk three, Brady one. I think Gronk's probably two, Brady one. You have you guys both have one of those things. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, <laughs> tune in Friday for number five. Did you Vince Wilfork seven through ten? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can't wait till we do. The only one two. The, all right. The the big thing that I had you had to factor in though is Don't like tell it. Don't spoil it. No, but like uh, my grading system isn't based purely on stats. No, it's rings your life. Is, rings is a major factor. Yeah. Vibes is a major factor. There's so many guys that won three Super Bowls. It's I, hard to, to I wouldn't credit them. I wouldn't. But Wouldn't Randy Moss, could, Bob's vibes guy. Could we get could we get a breakdown? So on Friday when we do number five, can we get like I would like in the balls scale, one through five, like give us rings, give us vibes. Yeah. X Factor. Mm-hmm. Will Fork is the only person to win in both dynasties, besides Brady, obviously. But that's a huge It's a big one, yeah. Big big. One. Yeah. I, I can't he wait. Was, he's, he he's won and then he suffered through the bad years, which they were good years. They yeah, still win Super Bowl. <laughs> But he came out the other side. Can you imagine the anticipation after Hank debuts his number eight Patriot, and then we have to wait two more days to get the final and last number seven? Seventh? Patriot? Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. All right, a so, lot of great players. Yeah, uh, let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne, then we'll get to our interview with Keith Yandel. Hot Seat Cool Throne is presented by Coors Light. From day to day annoyances to the big stuff, life throws your way. It's easy to get worked up. But there's a better way, a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance party. Too cold for an ocean swim? Play volleyball and light a bonfire instead. That's choosing chill. And when you choose chill, reach for a Coors Light when the mountains turn blue. It's as cold as the Rockies. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Thank you to Coors Light, the coldest and best beer in the world. Hank. My hot seat is Anthony Rendon. Yeah. Mm. People are big mad. I, I feel like athletes say this exact quote all the time, though. Yes. 
Like, you want to read it? It it does seem like something that's getting a little bit over exaggerated. But he said, baseball has never been a top priority for me. This is a job. I do this to make a living. My faith, my family come first before this job. So if those things come before it, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And people are, are you know freaking out. He's got a $245 million contract. Makes a lot of money. Makes a lot of money. Doesn't play a lot. He also complained earlier in the offseason about wanting the season to be shorter, which is another thing most people want. Yeah. But I do feel like the all players across the board, it's like a stereotypical answer to be like, my family comes first no matter what. I agree with that. The, I think the other problem he runs into, not just the money, um, is that he plays for the Angels. Yeah. And that's like the vibe of the Angels. Yeah. The Angels, as an organization, baseball is not their top priority. It used to be that way with the Padres, too. For right. Uh, but yeah, you can, I think a lot of players feel this way, but you probably shouldn't say it. Yeah. Like right before the season starts. Just, and after you're getting paid that much money. Yeah. You never had that problem with him in D.C. Great player. Yeah, it, it also kept on going. He said, "Is it a?" The reporter said, "Is it a priority?" He said, "Oh, it's a priority for sure because it's my job. I'm here, aren't I? Do you want to be here? I don't want to talk to you guys at seven in the morning or whatever time it is." That that fair ruled. It's relatable. Yeah. So I think maybe that part where he's like, "I'm here." He also might just he might have gotten bad vibes from the reporter. True. And just was giving him the most boring, easy answers ever. We don't talk about that enough. Bad vibes from a reporter. That's what that that guy who went after Jameis for scoring that touchdown. Yeah, bad vibes. Bad vibes. Okay, your cool throne. Uh, my cool throne, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, we we you know we, we mentioned it, but I Sunday or Monday was hung over from Sunday. Uh, were you hung we over from Sunday, or were you hung over from the things you did on Sunday? You were already hung over. No, you were drunk on Sunday. Yeah, so I was hung over yesterday. Got back. Watched the Dungeons and Dragons. I was like, "This is amazing." I, yeah. you know, I I hadn't seen it yet. The graphics are so good, and I feel like because we, you know, it was kind of during a break, we should give those guys their proper credit. Yeah, shout out Trey. It's shout worth out the watch. Quigs. They were incredible. Yeah, I, I watched a good deal of it on Friday when it came out. It it's, I don't know how they do what they do. No, but it's worth the watch. Go watch it. Thank you to Tim Woods, our champion. We'll probably do another one in, I don't know, four or five months when we get to July 4th. So it was great to have him just around for a day. I, I wish we could just hire him to just be a vibes guy. Yeah. He just was, have a game room with Tim Woods. Yeah. We Same. should go LARPing with him. Yeah. Yes. We, so he mentioned All right, we'll that. do that for July yes. 4th as well. Yes, we have to do it. We have to do, do it. Do like a, a two-day long LARP. It would be awesome. Yeah. Get dressed up. Yeah. Like horses. Just battle people. It sounds awesome. Look at us, planning our next vacation, but also planning our next content for vacation. Love that. Uh, my other hats, I mean, Embrace the Bait, I was getting shit. These, these new hats are on sale, and and Gaz was saying I can't wear them because it's Chicago. Like Chicago Barstool. Chicago Barstool. Yeah. Barstool, Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Those are good hats. Yeah. Yeah, we have all of our St. Paddy's Day merch. Check it out. Go buy it. But um, now I live in Chicago, I can wear hats. We, we also Chicago. did our St. Paddy's Day merch, very mean, um... We just used Mook's face, who's one of our coworkers, mm-hmm. and it's just it could be any Irish guy. It's just like this is Mook, a leprechaun. Oh, have you guys seen the Irish baby? No. Went viral yesterday? No. You guys gotta check out the just just look on Twitter, search Irish Ir- baby. Irish baby. Okay. It's this Irish baby that's that's uh holding a Guinness. And the it looks Mad. like a seventy nine year old. Oh guy. yeah, yeah. The Irish baby rocks. This guy's got some stories to tell. That Irish baby could drink me under the table. Yeah. Hey, wake up the most Irish baby just dropped. Yeah, it's very Irish baby. Love it. Um, my hot seat. Hank, are you done? Yep. My hot seat is Rick Pitino. Rick yes. Pitino is back, baby. He's back giving some serious quotes, and uh, he dropped some heat a couple days ago. He said, we are so unathletic, we can't guard anybody without fouling. For me, I've always enjoyed the first year, and I'm not going to lie to you, this is the most unenjoyable experience of my lifetime. That And that's he's got some pretty unenjoyable experiences. Yes. And also some really enjoyable ones, although brief. Yes. This has been so disappointing. Look, Joel's slow laterally. He's not fast on the court. Chris Ledlum is slow laterally. Sean Conway is slow laterally. Brady's physically weak. Drissa is slow laterally. Mm. And then he started talking shit about the, the team facilities. I mean, they did blow like a 20-point lead to Pug Seton Hall. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also saw, because he clearly made the guys like run a shitload in the gym after. Yes. He said, finally broke 200 in stamina shooting tonight. Uh, nah, Aline with 205. Sean Conway comes close with 190. We got to get this drill. 
Yeah. And do a, a challenge. And see if long. we get better at stamina shooting. Yeah, like can we can we break two hundred stamina shoots? It's gotta be an insanely hard drill. If there's two words that come to mind when I think of Rick Patino, it's uh -huh. definitely stamina shooting. Yeah, he walked into that one. Yeah, come on, Rick. Uh -huh. I slipped on it. Uh my cool throne is the Orlando Airport. Oh. The Orlando Airport on the big time cool throne. They're now selling passes for people to go inside the airport, shop and dine. Chili's? Without getting on a plane. Chili's is pre security. Chili's oh, do that. Yeah. Okay, so you can you Chili's can. already pre security. Yes. Oh, got it. Okay, well, but that's still awesome. But it's still awesome. It's still it's still well, rocks that you can go to the airport and eat the finest food. Yeah, that's not awesome. That could be awesome. <laughs> Wait. The best you part go about to the airport and don't go anywhere? The best part, well, we could be I'm going to predict that we're going to see an uptick in airport uh, related violence because the one thing that airports have going for them right now is you can talk all the shit that you want in an airport bar and nobody's got a weapon. Yeah. You know that no one's got a gun. No one's got a knife there. Now we're going to see some stabbings in airports, which America is long overdue for. The imagine being late for your flight and in TSA, there's a guy in front of you that just wants to go walk around the airport. Yeah. Drive you nuts. Well, I don't I don't think those guys have to go through TSA. Oh, they don't. I don't think so. I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah. But yeah, I that would still would probably have to. Maybe. I got I got random checked twice on the way home from Mexico. Yeah, the ID Sucked. check. Yeah. Yeah. Sucked. Didn't have anything. Kind of always I always feel disappointed for the person when they're checking your bag and you're like, I don't have anything. Yeah. It's like, I, I kind of wish I had something for you. They're never, they, they know that you don't have anything. Right. Like, it'd be cool if you pulled out like a long knife or something. Oh, that shit. Be, I forgot this in my yeah, bag. Yeah. Right. Like, but I, I'm just like sitting there like, you're going to be disappointed. I got, there's nothing. I got groped on my way back. Big time groped going through security. Higher girl. It was, it was a guy. It has to be a guy. Yeah. So you go through this I've scanner. Had and then it it shot off the alerts right on my dick and then right on my butt. And the guy looked at it. He looked at me. He was like, I'm going to have to uh, give you an extended pat down now. And he explained what was going to happen. And then he did it. And they really press. Like, it was very awkward being around all these other people. The guy's just, like, ramming his hand into your dick repeatedly. Yeah. That was tough. That was a tough move. I wish that I had something that I was packing that could be like, oh, shit. Yeah. I, that's my gun. My yeah. Bad. But no. He was just pressing my balls. Uh, you know who I saw who's right behind me in security coming back from Mexico? Your guy, Michael Porter Jr. Oh, really? I had already burned my, uh, you want to come on our podcast for the month, so I didn't say anything to you. Didn't, you didn't say anything? <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm still a little gun. I think you get one of those a month. Yeah. Did you, if you had like a microphone. on Mark Davis. If you had a microphone in your backpack, you could have been like, oh yeah, they found my microphone. I forgot to take that out because I do a podcast. Podcast, Michael Porter Michael Jr. Michael Porter Jr. If you're interested, new yeah. media. That's going to kind of suck though because like no one really recognized him. Like, I don't know. Just tall. You're an NBA champion. I feel like you want to get recognized a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever been to the Knoxville airport? No. So that one is. Yes. That TSA line is impressive. Yes, I have. Because they've got. As you're winding through the through the ropes, they've got all these pictures of guns that they've confiscated from people flying out of that airport. And I was like, this is a fuckload of guns. There were like there were like ten pictures there. And then I look closer and every single gun had been confiscated within like the last two months. Whoa. They find a lot of guns at that airport. You just forget your gun. Have you guys noticed the pre check and clear lines being longer than regular? Yeah. Yeah, some dilemma. Up. Yeah, no, no. I went through regular this morning. No, it's a clear plus is coming. Yeah, it's already here. I have it's, both. No, no, no. plus longer. plus. No, it's already here. Clear plus. Clear plus plus. Is I coming. Well, so whatever we, they're gonna do, they're setting it up so that they're gonna make you buy another. Thing. So right. what I what I noticed, they rebranded clear as now clear plus, yeah. and it, you get confused when you go to the airport. It's like I don't know if I have clear plus, but but that means that there's another level yeah, there's coming a, that implies they're intentionally clear minus. making it harder for TSA and clear so that we are going to buy a new one. They yeah. have to. Yeah. It's not it's really smart. valuable anymore. Savvy by them. Mm -hmm. Savvy by them. Uh, okay. So my hot seat is the Chicago Cubs because uh, we are on day, I believe, 143 uh, with Cody Bellinger not being signed. And he is still a free agent. They had pitchers and catchers. We're getting to the point. I really, really want the Cubs to sign him. We're getting to the point. This is my favorite part of free agency where we have uh, radio hosts uh, offering free things. Mm -hmm. So David Kaplan, friend of mine, he uh, he said that uh, uh, Lou Malnati's wife has offered free pizza for life for Cody Bellinger if he signs. Is that code? Uh, I Is don't know. Like Hillary Clinton QAnon shit? Yeah, free pizza for life. I am here right now because I want Cody Bellinger to be a cub. I'm going to offer something that I never thought I would offer, and I'm nervous about this because I don't think you'll agree, but I'm going to do it. Cody Bellinger, 
because you're listening to this show. If you sign with the Chicago Cubs, I will send you Hank's Patriot list five through ten. Five, four, three, two, one. How are you going to get it? Jake. And you know what? Ha <laughs> ha, you idiot. You sent it to Jake already. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to match. Yeah. I'm gonna no, match. I'll I'll send them five through one. Will you send them ten through, through I'll send seven? Them ten through seven plus honorable mention plus <laughs> plus you get a bonus lighthouse. Yeah, you won't have to wait any longer, Cody. Please sign with the Cubs. So it's Cody Blake Snell. Yeah, still hasn't signed. There are a few other guys like big names that haven't signed yet. I don't it's know what's crazy. going on. Why not? Why not, Cody? You can also use our golf simulator anytime. To be fair, the owners are poor and they don't have enough money to pay. Yeah, Tom Ricketts broke boy. Yeah. I think they're all Boris guys, too. No, they are. They, oh, they are, are Boris guys. Yeah. yeah, I know Cody's the Boris guy, and I think that's what's really holding it so up. So this is, this is the C word, then. I like you, Tom Ricketts, if you pay for Cody Bellinger. This, is, this would be collusion yeah. against Scott Boris. Or Scott Boris is colluding against them to then claim counter-colluding. So Scott Boris is asking for so much money that he can then say they're colluding against me. And then he can file a lawsuit against them. What if Scott Boris isn't even answering the phone and he's like, they're blackballing you. We're going to take him to court. Scott Boris might be texting owners and the owners are just so untext savvy that they don't look at their phones. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to do the email on the phone. Just call me. I think Scott Boris is probably playing it right because all these guys are going to like, once the season starts, be like, would we rather have Cody Bellinger or not? Yeah. I think we would. There's Let's good. Pay him. There's a lot of good players out there. Yeah. Uh, they should actually just do this every year. Boris should just make his own team. Boris All-Stars. Yeah. Well, then he'd have to pay them. True. True. But then he gets a 10% cut, so it's That's really true. a discount. That's true. That's true. All right, my cool throne is Sydney Sweeney's uh, boobs. Oh, why? That picture of her in the red dress, which I was getting shamed for. Like, come on, guys. The day you stop liking tits, kill me. I think- uh, And I die. I'm going to say something controversial. Yeah. I think Sydney Sweeney's very attractive. Yeah, she's and her boobs. I think she's a wonderful looking actress. She's hosting SNL. What's with guys snitching, dry snitching on online now? Oh what yeah, what, like? welcome to my world. Yeah, it's I, bullshit. Yeah, I can't like a Miley Cyrus series of pictures from the Grammy Awards. Well, this is why maybe we should abolish the bonk list. No, I think I think we need to embrace the bonk. Yeah, like if you're not getting bonked. Then there's something wrong with you. I'm a red blooded American male. Okay. People are trying to shame me, age shame me, kids shame me. I like wife shame me. I boobs I, are boobs. I dude. hit like on tweets and on pictures on Instagram, not because I'm horny, but because I'm trying to support them. Yeah. And to be like, hey, great job posting this picture. Also, Sydney Sweeney is like the most famous person right now. It's not like a random porn star. True. What? what? What's that, Hank? What? It's not. I listen. I am with you. Dry snitching shouldn't be happening because of the bonk list. I get sent a lot of big cats likes on Instagram, and there's a lot of randoms. Put it that way. Not that many. <laughs> also, uh, R.I.P. Cagney Lynn Carter, porn star. She died. Why don't we? Why don't we do highlight tapes after? She so could be cremated. No, but I'm saying like. Like when Kobe died, all we did, all we saw was like highlights of Kobe. Yeah, Mamba mentality. Right. Porn stars don't deserve that. They should. Yeah, they should. Just saying. Right. It'd be a long day <laughs> without you. My yeah, Sydney friend. Sweeney's hot. There, I said it. She's really. Hot. I think she's very attractive. I think she's very talented. Very talented. I think that. Very hot. I think that we should do a better job su- see new supporting. Movie. Um, is the one, is the one where she wears like a nun uniform the whole time? I think it's a Spider-Man movie. Oh, isn't there one that just came out where she wears like a nun uniform all the time? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to see that one. I'd watch her wearing nun. <laughs> nun clothes. Uh, Take that out. That was too horny. It's called Immaculate. Immaculate. In ah. theaters March 22nd. No, she is a very good actress. I mean, listen, Euphoria. What was the uh, White Lotus? When's that coming back? Yeah, White Lotus needs to be back. White Lotus was awesome. But don't make us wait in between episodes. Yeah. Uh, okay. They. I think they released what the hotel was. Like oh, they did, yeah, or something. yeah, yeah, somewhere like that. Uh, Jake, uh, my what do you think about Sydney Sweeney's boobs? Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. There's Jake's review. <laughs> it's Mr. Position. That's a yeah. <laughs> hey, Max, what do you think about Sydney Sweeney's Max boobs? Max is out on them. <laughs> yeah, you're out. No, I like them. Yeah, how much do you like them? Uh, they're 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 nice boobs. 
for a while we were shaming women for their breast size. I think I Hank was talking about Mad- Madam Web, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's that's the, that's Spider Man. I'm not going to see that just, either. How's she like just Spider-Man. in every movie? She's she's a hard worker. Incredibly this is hard like three working. Three movies in the past three months. Yeah, she's incredibly hard working. Uh, Jake, your hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat's Notre Dame. We had yeah. the official announcement of how the college football playoff is going to construct their 12-team bracket, and it was announced that the four highest-ranked conference champions will be seeds one through four, which means if Notre Dame is the best team in the country— I thought it was five. They would get the number five I seat. think it's five, yeah. So the, five, five seats, yes. Five seats, so Notre Sorry, Dame would they get would the, get the buy. That, yeah. would, that would be very funny if they just designed these rules and they're like, yeah, fuck you, Florida State again. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to take— we're going to take all the other conferences. But, yeah, Notre Dame. Well, there's only four left. Pager. Yeah. Notre Dame, are they going to Are they gonna have to join the ACC? I think they would join the Big Ten before the ACC. And then, so they take all their other sports out of the ACC. Yeah, because I don't think the ACC is long for this world. Yeah. It would be crazy if they joined the ACC. So that would be wild, though, if they joined, if they joined the Big Ten, then you'd have, like, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, only one of them would get – the top seed. Correct. Yeah, wild. Also, but this is a good way to do it. Pick out. I'm surprised you didn't put Justin Fields on the Bears on your hot seat. Oh, yeah. Well, Jake, funny you say that. Um, he unfollowed the Bears. You know who he didn't unfollow? Me. Sick. Yeah. I didn't know. Tom Fernelli actually told me that. That was uh, my other thing watching the uh, the Dynasty documentary. Oh, that like, wasn't about the Patriots. Well, no, I'm wondering. Like, it's like uh, it was it was good that the, the that Brady had time to develop. He wasn't Tom Brady. You know, even that was his second year in the league. <laughs> If you have a that's rookie quarterback a great, with a lot of pressure, it's it's hard. That was an incredible segue. <laughs> I was thinking about you when I was watching that documentary, being like, "Damn, Justin Fields." I I, I really bear. I really wish we could somehow like take events that happened in the past, bring them to modern day, and and know what the discourse would be around them. Yeah, it's like the Tom Brady game manager Super Bowl winning discourse would be so fun. to Oh, they threw that line in too. And like Tom Brady's doing a really good job managing this game. Yeah. In one of the, in yeah. one of the game. He would have been going crazy for it. But yeah, yeah, that's a good point about the bears. Hank. Yeah. Justin Fields did unfollow the bears. Uh, Is yeah. It? I don't think it's, I, I think he's probably going to get traded. So that's what I, like I like. said, I mean, it could mean literally anything. So it sounds like you're going to get Caleb. Yeah. It could mean anything like he doesn't want to play for the bears anymore. That could be one of the things or he hates the bears. It's the most, it passive- mean all of these things. I think this is the, this is my least favorite recurring storyline in sports. When an athlete unfollows his teammates and like the team official account on social yeah. media platforms, and then people do it in a story, and it's like, what does it mean? Well, it means that he did that because he wanted you to see that he did that and then to make a story out of it. Also, maybe it's just as simple as Justin Fields doesn't want to watch Bears highlights in his offseason because there's not a lot of them. Yeah, that's true. Like, well, it's like I just I kind of want to opt out on this content for the a little content bit. was bad. Well, you could yeah. mute you can mute it and it wouldn't be a story. You could mute yeah, it. I would never unfollow any professional team that that I played for. No. I just like once once always. Who unfollows people on on social media? Like if I follow you on Instagram, I'm never unfollowing ever. Ever. I'm too lazy to do. Even that. if you are a porn star and die. Yeah. I'll just keep that respect. Cuz what if one day it it posts again? Right. That's that's got to be such a nice surprise. Yeah. All right, Jake, your cool throne. Uh, my cool throne is the shot of a lifetime. Oh, I'm back in the booth. Jake is oh. for some golf. Nice. Next week on PGA Tour Live. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hell yes. I'll be doing a couple of events with them this season. First up, the Cognizant Classic in the Palm Beaches. We've got a great field that have committed so far. Rory. Oh. Ricky. Oh. Matthew Fitzpatrick has been on the show. No Max. I don't think we're going to get Max. Fuck. Yeah. But he, he probably has diarrhea butt from last week from all that in and out. Mm-hmm. Was it yeah. the in and out that gave people the shits? Is that what was happening? That's what they were claiming for Tiger. <laughs> yeah. Also, you didn't eat in and out in Vegas, Hank. You've changed. Yeah, oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Me and Jerry went after the DraftKings shoot. Oh, oh. yeah. Good, good, so good. tune in. Thursday oh, yeah. Come Sunday. on. I was with you. Yeah. 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 I was worried that you didn't. No. Uh, that's awesome, Jake. It, Everyone tune it, in. Thank you. It, it did give me the shits. Oh, no. Yeah. So I'm going to back on the run. Who else is on the call, Jake? Uh, TBD. Also, shout out the Water Dogs finishing second. Good job, yep. Mac. Mm-hmm. You fucking loser. You said you wanted to lose. Let's go Philly. Yeah, well, things change. It's nope. called material nope. change. Nope. It's called fluidity. I think it's perfect. I think yeah, no, I didn't want to win that. I did not want to win that. It was a fake. Well, let's win the real thing, right? It's preseason. What are the, the Ravens? 
No, we want to win the this real This is deal. basically the equivalent of the in-season tournament. Don't want to win you that either. You still hang a banner, no. and it means something. No, it does not. But It does not mean anything when you win the in-season tournament. Oh, yeah, Max does have to hang a banner second place. Yeah. No. We agreed upon that, Max. No, I never agreed on anything. We agreed on it. You all agreed us. on it. All, I did agree on it. You agreed on it. Hang the banner. <laughs> hang the banner. Hang the banner, bitch. Uh, okay. Let's get to our interview with Keith Yandel. Great interview. Talking hockey. Before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word from one of our sponsors. Yeah, before we get to Keith Yandel, he's brought to you by Raising Canes. I love Raising Canes. Basketball, hockey, and tomorrow even baseball will be in full swing. That means it's a perfect time to kick back and relax with a Raising Canes box combo and enjoy the game. I love Raising Canes. I love the uh, the bread there. It's elite. You got the crispy tenders. You got the crinkle cut fries, which are actually, I think, the perfect fry for dipping into ketchup. You get all the grooves saturated with ketchup, and they got the cane sauce. Get a little Louisiana hot sauce, mix that in with the ketchup. It's great. Nothing like Raising Cane's with college basketball playoffs around the corner, and you've got constant game time. You don't want to miss a minute. That's why you can trust Raising Cane's to get your favorite chicken fingers fast. No matter if you're dining in or driving through their hand-battered, cooked-to-order chicken fingers, crispy cut crinkle fries, and buttery Texas toast are going to hit the spot. And if you're trying to satisfy the whole crew's game time hunger, their tailgates full of chicken fingers and cane sauce are the perfect order. So if you want to get a big order, just go there, get a tailgate size chicken finger and cane sauce combo, and you're going to love it. Just go to RaisingCanes.com, check it all out. Better yet, head over to Raising Canes near you for your next game day meal. It's the perfect meal for the entire family, for everyone's entire family. Everyone likes chicken fingers. Everyone likes fries. Everyone likes the bread. Everyone likes their sodas. The lemonade. It's all good. Satisfy your Canes fix today. There really is no other option. And now, here's Keith Yandel. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, recurring guest. It is Keith Yandel. Uh, many year hockey pro. How many years? 13? 13 year hockey pro in the NHL? 16. 16, 16 years. Yeah. So, Yans, uh, I want to give Yans credit off the bat. We were, it's, it's the perfect spit and chicklets universe, okay? Down to you. You, you come in at the end here. Uh, Biz was supposed to come on. He was feeling under the weather because he had to work two days in a row. So I was like, he texted me this morning. He's like, hey, I can't do it. I'm, I'm feeling sick. So I texted Wit. Wit's on a boat in Florida. And he's like, right after the boat, I'm going to golf. And he's like, but Yans is the best. I was like, yeah, I know Yans is the best. So I texted you and you came to our rescue. But you also gave me a little nugget of information that you have never in your life owned a computer. Yeah, never have, never will. <laughs> I think it's the most civilian thing you can ever do. So what are what you doing this mean? on right now? His wife's computer. My wife's. <laughs> what does that mean you've never owned a computer? You've never wanted to own a computer? No, no. Zero interest. <laughs> Until that's... I have to get a real job. That's your computer, though. Like, if it's your wife's it's... computer, that's a family computer, right? No, it's like her work uh, lab <laughs> laptop. So, so us call calling you up, like she's got to take a break from work right now because you got to use the one computer in your house. Well, the kids have them too, but I think they're at school with them. Um, yeah, and so, I was on a boat and golf this morning, but still found a way to make this show. That's happen. a grinder. That's, that's yeah. a hockey player. What about growing up? Like growing up, you didn't have a computer for book reports, things like that. No, did you guys have computer? Actually, no. we got one. We got one when I got drafted. It was like because um, the year I got drafted was the lockout year, so they did it all online. And my parents went out and bought a computer um, to see where I was going to get drafted. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, we are all of, of of similar age, and it was. I remember we we got our first computer in my house. Like maybe it was like late late nineties, and it was just one computer for everyone. So, like, when you start looking porn, you're like, oh, this is going to be bad. You get a virus, you're like, fuck, the next person. Like, my mom's going to look up a recipe on this computer, and there's going to be pop-ups everywhere. That was just, you had to go through some shit with the one family computer. Oh, yeah, it was a grind downloading on Napster, just you know, hearing your dad coming up the stairs trying to delete things. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't good. So, wait, you when you were on the road for 16 years in the NHL, you never were like, hey, maybe I should get a computer? Like, what did you do when you were on planes, like, watch a movie? You just you just don't have a computer. Well, when it first started, it was, remember, everyone had those uh, DVD players that, like, you flip up, and then there'd be a 
so everyone would buy their own DVD player and then there'd be a ton of DVDs on the plane. Uh, so I'd just bring that. And then, um, I, I mean, I have a, uh, um, iPad. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that's computer adjacent. Does the iPad have like the, the keyboard that connects to it? No, God, no, I can't even type. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cause I fall asleep to my iPad. I have it on like the desk next to my bed. And I, uh, I just, I, I strictly have it for that. I have Netflix, Amazon, um, HBO, whatever, I, uh, just on that, just to watch before we, bed. We got to get a, a typing contest between you and biz, because even though biz owns, I'm, I'm assuming he's owned several computers in his lifetime. I think you could still beat him. Yeah. His, his buttons are probably all stuck together though. From <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. Uh, from the flu. Uh, all right. So we, we wanted Yans on to talk a little hockey. So, uh, we're, we're now getting to the end of February. We're getting what a month and a half away from playoff hockey. My first question was, what is the dog days of hockey? What part of the season? Cause we know it with, you know, football season, you'll get to mid season and, and you'll see some guys hitting the wall baseball you get to like mid early mid august and it's like oh man this is a grind what is that in the calendar for hockey players i think they've gotten a lot better with it um especially you know now, my first you know maybe seven ten years that it was just a grind especially i was we were on some bad teams in phoenix and guys are getting traded guys are hearing about getting traded so there's a lot there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes where you're like oh god you know every day is just kind of like and that was before the old um nowadays you get four days off a month that was before that so you were practicing every day if your team was bad but nowadays it seems like you know the teams are well aware of that and you know they're putting together whether it's you know family trips uh mother trips father trips siblings trips uh i think they're doing a lot of good things like that but i remember a couple times in phoenix you know we would go to vegas for a couple days kind of have a team bonding um play some golf go, hit the casino um you know new york was really good with it as well you, if you had a couple couple games where you're in strictly cold weather we'd come down to florida a couple days early to golf or whatever um so I think I think the league, uh, the teams have done a really good job, and it's probably because a lot of GMs are ex players now, so they kind of realize that those dog days are real. Um, but I think it, the the majority of the thing is keeping it. The, the the best thing was to have a um, a rookie party around this time. But if your team's out of it, then you know the coach is like, all right, we can't go too hard. You guys are playing like shit, but. And then if you're, you know, at the top of the ranks, then you're like, all right, we don't want to go too hard. We don't want to take our foot off the pedal here. So it was kind of a, a little bit of a, a gray area in both. But it seems to me the last, you know, probably 10 years, it, it, the the league's gotten really good about kind of taking care of these dog days and making things light and, and, and easy, easy for the guys. Yeah. yeah, you were talking about the rookies. Um, the guy on the Bruins that made his debut yesterday, is it is it Morelli? Yeah. Yeah. So he scored in his debut, and I was I was watching, and I thought to myself, like, I feel like there's a lot of rookies who score in their debut. Is that just a, is that a thing I'm making up, or is that an actual thing in the in the NHL? It does seem a little bit more uh, nowadays. Before it was, I think my first game, I probably played seven minutes, but you know, nowadays that they're, they're throwing guys into the fire, getting guys getting guys right into it, playing on the top lines. You know, not really putting guys on fourth lines where they don't aren't getting chances. So, I think uh, they're setting guys up for 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 success. But yeah, it definitely definitely seems that way. And how about the kid in in, in New York playing his first game, the outdoor game, fought first second of the game. Um, I think it was on the anniversary of his dad passing away, like six years before that too. So that was a cool story as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hockey always has those cool stories that pop up. I wanted to go back when you said, you know, you played on some bad teams. How much does this part of the season suck if you're a bad team? Because I know, like, the Blackhawks are a very bad team. Connor Bedard obviously just came back, which is good. But are like, are guys like this just fucking sucks? I want to get out of here so bad. Yeah, you you see a lot of guys either planning to go play world championships or planning their summer vacation right after the season. So it's uh it, it's tough. And then the worst part is if your team's bad, then at the end of the day, it means people are going to get traded, and you know you're losing friends. You got to pack up your family and move. Um, so a lot of things like that. And then you know teams are bringing up guys from the minors. Then you know you're worried about your job. You, you, so there's no real downtime if your if your team's playing bad. You still got to produce and 
and go out there and give 100 percent effort and um but it, th- there's definitely some some times during the season where you're like, oh, man, we're really doing this again. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like around this time of year where if if there's no like real light at the end of the tunnel, you're just like, I guess I guess I got to be a pro. I guess I have to show that I'm professional. Yeah. Yeah. You're waiting for the 15th and 30th payday. <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, we have we have this debate with every hockey guest that we have on here. Uh, what is the difference between an upper and a lower body injury? Mm. I think uh, anything below the belly button is a lower body injury and anything above the belly button is upper body injury. Okay. I agree with that because we've had people that that say waste and I think that's bullshit. I think it's the, I think it's the belly button. Yeah. All right. So we're on the same page. Did you you ever get injured and you were like, can I just say what it is? This is bullshit. Like people don't, because sometimes I'll see like an upper body injury and be like, oh, he can get back out there. But like, no, his shoulder's broken. Why don't they just say that? Yeah. I don't know why, because at the end of the day that the other teams know, like, you know, if a guy's shoulders hurt the way he's, you know, lumbering around out there, or if his, his knees hurt, especially now with video, you, you, you see a guy going into the boards the wrong way. You're like, Oh, he hurt his knee there or hurt his ankle or hurt his shoulder. So I, I think throughout the league, everyone kind of knows, but I, I don't know why they don't say it in the media, but uh, you know, it's kind of one of those cool things that hockey does where it keeps guys on the wrap. I, I think originally it started. So, you know, if guys were up for a contract, then, you know, they couldn't use it against you. Oh, yeah, that makes I like sense. that. I always assume it was so that the other team wouldn't target you. If they knew it was a knee, then somebody might make a run at your knee. Yeah, but every, everyone on the ice knows if you're hurt. I mean, by this time in the season, pretty much everybody's hurt anyways. You have some lingering bruises or, you know, you, it's something, you're not feeling 100%. Um, so every single guy's feeling something right now but um yeah it, it's it's interesting this if they ever come out and go away with it and tell you what exactly the injury is i uh, i'll be interested to see if they ever do that was there ever uh, a season or a guy who just w- wouldn't get injured because i feel like everyone knows that one guy who just never you know the kid who never broke any of his bones playing sports or you know that one guy who just is for some reason never gets injured would you guys all look at him and be like fuck you dude like we're all dealing with something and you're fresh well, I, I was I had the Iron Man streak until Phil Kessel broke it. Um, so you were the guy that everyone hated, probably. But <laughs> I don't know because I mean I didn't really play the type of game where I was putting myself in vulnerable spots, and um, you know, yeah, th- there was a lot of guys. I think every guy plays with you know as much pain as they can, and it's usually the the doctors or the the trainers that have to tell you you can't go. I've never seen a guy go in and be like, Hey, I can't play tonight. Um, it's usually, they have to drag you off the ice and, you know, notice you can't tie your skates cause your, your, your fingers are broken or something like that. So it, it's usually the doctors or the GM and, uh, trainers that make that decision for guys. Cause hockey, hockey players are a stubborn, bu- stubborn bunch of group. Yeah. We learned that mighty ducks. Yeah. When what? they had Adam Banks hold the, hold the, uh, stick and he had to rotate yeah. and they're like, no, you yep. can't go dude. What was the dumbest you, injury you played you, through? <laughs> The dumbest one, um, looking back, pro- when I was in New York, I, I had a grade three separation. I got a first game of the playoffs, and we ended up going to game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. So every day I was shooting it, or not every day, every game I was shooting it up, um, you know, having to have the trainers help me put my jersey on, uh, it, things like that. And it, but it's also it's during playoffs, so you, you just want to be out there, you want to be playing, you want to be contributing. So, but that that one was probably the worst one, and you know, getting back healthy from that one took a little bit longer because it was, uh, you know, something I was dealing with for for quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I know that you're you're a sports fan. You're deep balls deep in the discourse about other sports too. Um, we've had some discussions about how analytics uh, might be ruining or might be improving football, basketball. Uh, in ruining hot, basketball, ruining basketball, I think improving, but also ruining football because big guys can't get uh, NFL head coaching jobs anymore. Uh, but in the NHL, what is it? What is the uh, what impact has the analytics revolution had on the sport? Is it good or is it bad? I hate it. I know, I know nothing. <laughs> um, oh, too I many know computers. Guy, guy who doesn't own a computer. That's a shocker. <laughs> probably wasn't a great analytic guy either but it also doesn't you know contribute to the good times in the locker room or on the road so you, you're not you're not getting that in, in analytics but yeah I was never a big fan um I think there's 
some good things about it, I guess, but I, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you one what what an analytic really is. I, I love that. <laughs> what an, what a, you can't if you walked past an analytic on the street, you would not recognize it. Absolutely not. They have like whole, they have whole team like a whole group of people within the teams now that kind of take care of that, and they're literally just in their computers all day. It's like just go get. <laughs> real job <laughs> what, one the one thing that analytics has done in, in hockey is it's ruined the shoot the puck guy in the stands because they i feel like teams are a lot more selective with their shots they won't shoot from bad angles like they used to where it's like pucks on net it's like no you got to get the good shots i don't know i kind of disagree with that because I, I remember guys would you know you take a, a shot on net is considered a good thing for your analytics like the zone time and stuff like that so some guys you know Guys would shoot it from the corner just to shoot it on the net, and you'd get back to the bench. Guys would be like, "Oh, what are you patting your fucking analytic that?" So, <laughs> oh, so maybe I'm was, wrong. Yeah, maybe I don't know an analytic in hockey either. Yeah, but the, the shoot, the shoot guy, the shoot guy is the worst, <laughs> the worst thing you can have at, at a hockey game, especially as a guy that I never, I wasn't a big shooter. I was more of a passer, but uh, the shoot guy is the worst. Oh, I love, I love the shoot to puck guy because that <laughs> that guy's sitting in the stands, being like every shot in his head goes in. So it's like, why not yeah. shoot the puck? Good things happen. Yeah, I'm big. I'm big on it in soccer too. Like, why not just fucking shoot the ball? They should shoot more. I agree. With <laughs> yes, that. yes. Shoot the ball. Just fucking kick it. Uh, all right. Yeah. So I know it's tough in hockey because hockey is the one playoffs where you get crazy runs. You get eight seeds winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, but if we're sitting right here right now, give me the list of teams that you could see winning the Stanley Cup this year. It could go as long or as short as you want it to. All right, I'll, I'll I'll just do two. I'll do two from the east, two from the west. Oh, I like I'm that. Gonna, I'm gonna do uh, Florida. I, I think that especially what they did last year, what they've done this year, um, you know, even missing missing uh, you know two of their best defensemen earlier in the year, just playing the way that they have. I think Bobrovsky's been amazing. Um, Barkov, uh, Sam Reinhardt's got a, a you know thirty something goals. Um, just a hard team to play against. They're like you. You watch their games, and it's fucking old school hockey. Like stop in front of the net, cross checking guys in the face. It's great. Um, so I, I got them and the Rangers coming out of coming out of the East that I like both. Uh, I think the Rangers have a, t a ton of depth up front. Um, you know, goaltending has been. You know, I think Shesterkin. Well, Jonathan Quick has been amazing for them. I think Shesterkin could be a little better, but. It's one of those things when you get into playoffs and you have a guy like Shesterkin who's as good as he is. If he goes on a run, it's uh, you know, it could be could be game over for them. And then out west, I, I really like Dallas. I liked them a lot last year too. Um, you know, with with Ottinger, I think he's one of the best goalies in the league. He's a young guy, uh, had 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 a good run last year, but I think he's just going to continue to get more confident in the playoffs. Uh, I think they have a, a great, you know. Older guys and younger guys kind of leading that team. Guys with Jamie Ben and then Robinson with the younger guys, Rupe Hens. It's a, uh, you know, they're they're a fun team to watch. And then, you know, I think it, it, it's hard to it's it's hard to bet against Vegas, but I think Colorado, the way that they're buzzing Ooh. this year, um, you know, if they could get Landis Cog back for playoffs, you know, that would be a huge a huge uh, add for them. But it's also too a lot of these teams. Um, you know, I, I feel more and more the trade deadline, you know, it used to be the top four teams are going out making huge splashes. I think teams nowadays are kind of sticking with what they have gotten them there, um, you know, kind of trusting, trusting within. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see the trade deadline, what teams are doing. Um, but but a lot, I think a lot of pieces are out there too. Also Vancouver too, Vancouver, what they've done this year. But I, I don't, I don't think Canada is going to win a Stanley Cup anytime soon. Yeah, the, okay, the yeah. trade deadline being uh, in March is pretty crazy. It is wild, yeah. Because it's just like that's that's very late, it feels like, in the season where you're you're looking around and it's like you you got, what, a month before the playoffs and you can still make a move? Yeah, and you see more and more. I think teams are making trades earlier uh, rather than waiting to the trade deadline. There used to be 50 trades every trade deadline. Now it's, you know, there's not many. So I think teams are doing it earlier. Uh, as opposed to late nowadays, we saw a big trade, um, you know, with Calgary and Vancouver in uh, right before the the uh, All Star game. So, 
I think uh, I, I think teams are going a little bit more towards the getting guys in, having them get comfortable, uh, and, and, and getting adjusted to the team system. So you, you didn't say Connor McDavid and the Oilers. Um, Whitney's told us that he's the greatest player to ever play any sport. Any sport. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't he wouldn't he have won a championship by now? I know, but he. <laughs> I, I I agree. I be, MJ won his first one at what twenty six? I think it was 27? maybe twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven. How how old's McJesus? He's I think he's younger than that, right? Mm, Connor McDavid, but he's better than MJ. That's what twenty seven we're years old. Is he twenty? So this is the year. Um, I I don't. I think that they're in the. I think their goaltending might hurt them a little bit. Obviously, the run that they've been on uh, since the beginning of the season when they were absolute dog shit. They've been, they've been great. Uh, I think McDavid and dry settle can lead any team to victory, but I think their goaltending is a, you know, it's just not quite there, but you, you look at the last, you know, few Stanley cup winners besides Tampa with um, Vasilevsky, a lot of these teams, you know, a goalie comes out of nowhere and helps them win Vegas. I think uh, was on their third string goalie last year. Um, even St. Louis, when Bennington came in out of nowhere and won them a cup, you know, even, even Chicago when they wanted the, you know, they had, they had Crawford who was an amazing goalie, but he wasn't, you know, a top three goalie in the league. He wasn't making the most money in the league. So I think, I think a lot of it, if, if your goalie gets hot, obviously you got a good chance, but I don't see it as much in, in, in uh, Edmonton. If I had to take a Canadian team, it would, it would be Vancouver and mostly because of their goaltending, um, you know, with Demko, he's he's amazing and American. So we, yeah, you haven't mentioned the Leafs, and it feels like every year I fall for the Leafs bullshit because they always have some bullshit where it's like, oh yeah, this is the year they can put together. They've got a lot of talent. Austin Matthews probably like right now the hottest player of the NHL. Um, yeah. What? Give me a reason why the Leafs will not win the Stanley Cup. <sighs> to be honest, I think it would strictly be because their fan base is too hard on them. I think uh, <laughs> some of those teams, like I, I worked in, I worked in Toronto last year doing uh sports net and they have one bad period of one bad game. They're sell the farm, you know, you know, blow up the team, get rid of everyone. I think Brad tree living and Shane Doan, what they've done since getting in there um, in management have been really good. Just kind of settling things down, getting guys uh, accountable there. I think they look a lot better this year as a team. Um, obviously what, what uh, Austin Matthews is doing is insane right now. He's got 50 goals, right. in 54 games. It, it, it's unbelievable what this guy's doing um, with how good the goalies are, you know, how much team scout players uh, everyone, you know, is, fully aware what he can do to you every night, but no matter what, he can still find a way to score. But I just don't know if they can get past that hump and, and win it this year. I, I actually would love to see them win it. I think it, it would be great for the game. Um, they put on, well, I was up there a couple of weeks ago for uh, all-star weekend. They put on an amazing show, but um, yeah, I, th I think their fans just need to be a little bit nicer to the players. I love that. I love that. They're yeah, Eagles fans. Definitely not an analytics guy. Yeah. What, what's the reason that Leafs can't win the Stanley Cup? Their fans are assholes. They're too mean. <laughs> yeah, they're, it sounds like they're Eagles fans where it's like, you you know, first first sign of bad things, like fire everyone. Yeah, like Max. Yeah, exactly. Like Max. By the way, Connor McDavid is incredible. I got to see him in person uh, like three weeks ago, and it is insane watching him play in person because you're like, holy fuck. He's just so much faster than everyone. It's yeah. if you to, if you took someone to their first ever hockey game and it was Connor McDavid, they just they would immediately be like that guy. Why is he so different than everyone else? Yeah, I did I did a hockey camp this summer uh, with my brother, and we had some seven year olds, eight year olds, and you know we doing a scrimmage or a keep away, and I was kind of just going full speed trying to keep it away from these guys and it looks easier for McDavid keeping it away from NHL players than it did for me with seven-year-olds. <laughs> He's on a different level. It's it's unbelievable how fast he is, how controlled, how controlled he is with the puck while he's skating a hundred miles an hour. It's just, uh, it, he's an impressive player. And I, I think wits, wits, uh, wits saying that he's the best athlete ever is not far fetched. Um, you know, I think what he's doing to hockey is insane right now. And, um, 
you know, hopefully he can get one, a championship at well, some time. Well, so, I mean, we asked with this, and we can ask you, it. like, if he's the best player in the world right now, why does he come off the ice? Good question. Mm-hmm. Very good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, How many minutes does LeBron play per night? Yeah, Patrick lot, Mahomes doesn't miss a snap. A lot more. I think just strictly because he's a good teammate. He wants to get his, his guys out there. He knows that there's, um, you know, 21 other guys that that got to make a living. Um so he's probably just out there being a good teammate, just letting guys get a touch. Um, but a, if, if anyone could play the whole game, it would probably be, be him. But I was actually, I was just the way uh, talking with one of my buddies who knows nothing about hockey. And he was like, how come you guys only stay out there for 30 seconds? And <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good question, but it's, it's a tiring 30 seconds. You, you know, you're getting leaned on by big, heavy guys. You're, you're skating as fast as you can. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, you, if you stay out there for more than a minute, no matter how good a shape you are, you're dead. Yeah, what what it when you're when you're in the defensive zone, what uh what time is it like? This is we're so fucked when because there is nothing better in like playoff hockey, especially when a team can get uh you know they're in the zone for so long and they can't clear the puck and you're just like watching guys die. At what moment, like what time in that where you're like I'm so fucked, it's gonna be a goal. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, it's called the graveyard shift. You're just you know, trying not to die. And Biz says it all the time. He's like, you lose oxygen to your brain. You don't know what you're doing. The puck comes to you. You give it to the other team. When you know, if you had any any uh, if you had some freshness in your legs or in your brain, you would you would make a good play. But when when those are happening, when you're on the ice, when you're uh, when the team's snapping it around, you can't get you can't get out of the zone. You can't get a whistle. It's one of the worst feelings in the world. And I prob- my analytics are probably very high for being out there for those shifts. <laughs> Which is the longest you've ever been on the ice? Oof, I don't know. Uh, in the NHL, probably you know, two or three minutes. Um, whether Jesus. it's you know, empty nets, empty. Net- I mean, there's probably obviously whistles and stuff like that too. But uh, you know, end of games when you're when you're out there, if there's a power play, you're staying the full two minutes. But yeah, probably. Two and a half, three minutes. Oh, I, sounds I'm, like a long ass time. I'm looking right now. Last year, Jack Hughes broke the record. He had a shift of six minutes and two seconds. Damn, that's insane. <laughs> that's wow. insane. That's unreal. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. Keith Yandel was brought to you by Proper Number Twelve Irish Whiskey. That's right. Pro- proper Twelve is rich and smooth. It's Irish whiskey. They've also got the Proper Number Twelve Irish Apple Whiskey which is the best sipping whiskey that you can have. Just pass a bottle around, pour it on ice, pour it in a glass. You can even mix it. It's great, great stuff. I love drinking it. They sent us a bunch when they came on as a sponsor. Put it on my bar cart. That stuff went fast. It's crisp and fresh, especially the Irish Apple. It was founded by Conor McGregor. You can shoot your shot of proper number 12 Irish whiskey and pour the roar. Order your bottle of proper number 12 Irish whiskey with Drizzly. Check it out. And now here's Keith Yandel. Hey, I, I got a question for you. How come whenever the, the puck goes out of play, everybody on the ice just puts their hands up in the air and, like, yells at the ref like the ref didn't see it? For a penalty. Oh, if they just delay a game. No, they're trying to be like, hey, it went out. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're just trying to say, I don't know. That's actually – that's a good uh, good question. Everyone does it. You, you're 100% right. It's, it's probably just to make sure that – because a lot of times it could get tipped by a stick or hit uh, a piece of the glass, and if it hits the glass or a stick, then it's not a penalty, so – I think when everyone's pointing, it's kind of just a uh, indication to tell the ref that it, it, it went straight out and it should be a penalty. I, I always assumed it's no different than when there's a fumble in football and everyone points to their direction. It's like no one actually knows. They're just trying to get the ref to be like, oh, yeah, he pointed first. Yeah, yeah when they're in the scrum. You mean yeah, like yeah, first. right. If you point first over the glass, like the ref will be like, oh, maybe it did go out. Yeah. But when a guy shoots it over the net, you can you can, if you see their face, they know exactly what they did. That's that's one of the worst feelings in the world is is shooting shooting one over the over the glass and getting a penalty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you also didn't mention the Boston Bruins. Curious why why they're not on the list. I actually I, in the beginning of the year, I didn't even see them being as good as they are. I thought they were going to be uh, you know a wild card team. Um, you know, very impressed with what they've done this year. I thought I thought losing Bergeron was gonna, really going to hurt them, but um, you know what Pasta does every year is amazing. Marshawn stepping in as a captain this year. Uh, I also thought they did a good job of bringing in um, 
some older veteran guys, which not a lot of teams are doing. You know, they brought in, you know, JBR, uh, Kevin Shattenkirk, you know, guys that have been around, guys that know what it takes. Um, so I, I think they did a good job with bringing in older guys to help out their younger guys because, you know, you look in the beginning of the year, I think the kid's name's Portois or something like that. He started off hot, had a, had a, had a good first 10 games. But, you know, when you're young, anyone can have good 10 games that – you need those veteran guys around to to help you out, um, you know, during the dog days of the year, like they like they are now. And um, I think the Bruins did a good job of that. I just I, I think the East is going to be tough to get to get out of. Um, you saw a little bit last year with the way that they do their two goalie system doesn't quite work in playoffs. You got to have that one guy. Um, so I mean, we'll see. I don't think anyone will want to play them in the playoffs, but I, I don't see them going on a deep run and. Um, probably good that I live in Florida now, not Boston, because I'd be getting my head punched in. Yeah, um, all right, one guy I wanted to bring up, because we just saw his jersey get retired in Pittsburgh, Yarm- Yarmir Yager. It was awesome. They all wear mullets. They came out. Uh, he seems like an absolute legend of a guy. You got to play with him. Uh, yeah. Is it is our like view of, of Yager like, correct, that he is just a guy everyone loves, not only because he was so talented, but just – a good dude in the locker room. He he was amazing. He was uh the way I describe it, he was like a little kid. He was just a little kid, but when I played with him, I think he was 67 years old, so <laughs> but, but he um like he, he would sit on I'll never forget he'd be like, "Hey Yenzi, Yenzi, want to go get a muffin? Want to go get a muffin?" He'd, he'd sit on the back of the bus and he'd eat his muffins like a little kid. Uh <laughs> unbelievable, but good good Yager story. I think it was uh Foxwoods or Mohegan Sun when he was in either Pittsburgh or New York they were opening up their casino and they waited for a night that Yager was playing in Boston and could make the trip up there and kind of you know be part of the first the open night I'm like oh that's pretty cool they wanted you there he's like they didn't want me there they wanted all my money (laughs) (laughs) he probably gave it to him Oh yeah, yeah. And the, I, the quote that he had, where he was like, uh, "Yeah, I, I want to take my girlfriend too. She's too young to remember when I played in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but I think she would have liked it here." Yeah, <laughs> that rocked. There was a clip I saw that someone was like, "Yeah, Yager used to have a party every year, and it was a hundred people, and there was no more than ten dudes." Yeah, oh, the guy was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he, the girlfriend that he had when I played with him, same thing. She was probably twenty-two, twenty-three, and. Yeah, and this guy, like, he would make her come to the rink with him. He'd go to the rink at midnight and just go skate around, and she'd have to sit in the stands and video him. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on here? And I'm like, Yogs, what does she do? He's like, oh, you want to see? She's strong. She's strong, too. And he's 250 pounds. We were at our, our Halloween party, and he's like, you want to see how strong she is? I'm like, yeah, sure. He just jumps on his back, and she started doing squats with him on his back. I'm like, what is going on in there? How- <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Loved, loved the game more than anyone. Probably the biggest rink rat I've ever seen. Was always at the rink uh, tinkering with stuff. He'd put like, you know, the pre-wrap they put on like your wrist. If you're taping your wrist, he would put that on a stick and then put tape over it to make his stick softer. He he was just, he was ahead of his game with the stuff that he had. And, uh, you know, he'd put potatoes on his knees if his knees were hurting and his shin pads. He'd put like, he had this... Uh, this metal healing thing he'd put on his chest and like tape it to his shoulder pads. And I'm like, what does that do? Yogs? He's like, brings me strength. Brings me strength. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But, uh, uh, biggest work. Like he skated every day at an old age. He'd have 10 pound weights on his skates, which is insane to skate around in. And, you know, he'd have those on his skates. He'd be like, oh, I feel like I'm 55 years old. I'm like, Yogs, you got 10-pound skates. Like, you, you have to just skate regular so you can feel at least 45, you know? Yeah. I mean, he plays it's, 27 years or 28 years, whatever it was. So something uh, works. Yeah. Yep. The potatoes. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's the most Eastern European thing I've ever heard. Like, potatoes yeah, to your knees. It's kind of like pouring vodka on your knees. It makes it, <laughs> it, makes it nice and warm and toasty. Oh. Um, I always heard. My dad, my dad, when we were younger, like Yarme Yarga does a thousand, uh, you know, squats a day, five hundred push-ups, and I always thought it was just a dad lie, you know. And 
I asked him and he he said, yeah, he was like, I did that as a kid, did a thousand squats every day before school, a thousand after wrist curls, everything. The guy, he he was a machine just built to play hockey. Yeah. Also caps legend. I have have one question about the capitals then we'll move on. But, uh, it seems to me like they've constructed their entire roster to spend the next two years, just getting over the goals record. Is that, is that fair to say? Like, are they, are they even trying to compete for anything? Yeah, they are. I mean, I think that they're they're a proud organization. I think that, you know, they're going to, you know, obviously try to win the Stanley Cup every year, like every team. But I think um, I think what they're doing for Ovi, I think a, a lot of teams, especially nowadays, you know, the older you get, you know, they kind of teams are kind of pushing you out. But I think, well, you know, what he's done for that city with for that organization, he deserves everything that that he's getting and, you know, whether it's trying to help him get the the goal record or or play as long as he can to get it, I think uh, I think they're doing the right thing by him and and he deserves it. Yeah, like I'm I'm fine with it. I think if you're if you're not going to be like at the top of that level and actually have you know a chance to win the Stanley Cup, take care of your guy that gave you what 15, 20 years of of great hockey and try to help him accomplish something that's crazy. That's like that's the one thing that I am paying attention to with the Capitals this year. It's like, okay, I want to know when Ovi scores. I want to know how he's doing. I want to make sure he's healthy and he's not like hurting the team when he's out there. At least to my eyes, he can still play at a high level. 100%. And he he's a guy I think like Yager, um I don't think there's an age limit for him to play. I think that what he does, he's so big, he's so strong. Um you know, obviously shoots the puck like a savage. So he, you know, he'll be able to get his goals. And I think it's just strictly up to him whether he wants to continue to keep playing and, and chase the record. Um, you know, and I, I know talking to Wayne, Wayne would like to see him to see him get it. Yeah, you know, he knows that, you know, records like that are meant to be broke and good for the game and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I, I, it is a good thing for the league to have a guy to be even within you know, talking about, you know, breaking a Wayne Gretzky record. And, um, you know, everyone always said forever that it would never be touched. And now you got Ovechkin and the way Austin Matthews is scoring, uh, you know, the, the, those records could be broken. Yeah. Um, uh, so one Blackhawks question, they're the worst team in the league. Uh, so they might get the first pick again. Obviously, Connor Bedard being out for like a month and a half probably helped them. They, they wouldn't have been good even if he was healthy the whole time, but they might not have been the worst. Uh is the is the Celebrini kid just as like can't miss as Bedard? I th- from everything I've heard, I've watched him play maybe three times this year. He's got an absolute laser of a shot. Um, you know, Wit works over at BU with them. I think he helps out over there. Um, was he w- it, what working with their golf swing or something? Yeah, <laughs> getting them out on the boat. Um, <laughs> it's important yeah, to take no. time off, boys. <laughs> Yeah, this guy more vacations than anyone uh he was just down in florida two weeks ago and then he texted me the other day he's like hey i'm gonna be down there on thursday you want to golf i'm like do you, do you ever stay home <laughs> yeah i think it's a situate thing him and hank yeah that's true a couple a couple uh vacation <laughs> legends yeah they just vacation so but he celebrini might be the the like he might be another can't miss guy yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he's going to be that guy that is a is a can't miss. Um, you know, talking to one of my best friends as a scout, uh, he he's saying he's he's a can't miss. Um, I think there's a few guys in the draft that are that are really good, but um, I think if they were able to get him and uh, and Bedard, and obviously being a great city, Chicago, I think that th- they will have some really good teams for a long time. Because you know, I'm. Uh, you, know, you hate to say, it, but a team like Winnipeg, if they're getting first overall guys, then you're not really getting the um, free agent signings as much as a, a city like Chicago would get because it's such a good city. You know, guys love playing there. Great fans, great atmosphere, best jerseys in the league. So it's, uh, I think, I think if they were able to get him, then it, it'll be a fun, you know, 15, 20 years for you guys. Yeah, yeah, they'll rig the draft again. They should yeah. remember. Remember when 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 the Hawks were winning their Stanley Cups, it was like a joke that NBC. It was like every single week, it was a Blackhawks game. It was it was every every like every time there could be a national televised game, it was a Blackhawks game. Yeah, and I remember playing during those, and you're like, "Geez, why do the Blackhawks get every game?" But now being out and being in the media, it's you, know, you got to put on games that are going to grow the game, and and the players that are going to grow the game. Um, you know, I think the league's doing an amazing job of of that. Uh, you know, growing 
in the game, getting guys, getting guys out there more than they had in, in the past. Um, but it, it's, I think when Chicago's a, a good team, it's good for everyone. Yeah. It's original six. Whenever there's an original six, it feels like there's just more momentum. Yeah. Or, or just big fights. If there's constant big fights, like I think the last time we had biz on, he told us to watch Wi-Fi. that dude up in Montreal. That yep. dude, that dude can throw some punches. I love watching clips of his fights. Who's another? Who's another goon or tough guy that we should keep our eye on? I think Brady Kachuk, who's I think he's leading the league in fights this year. And I I golfed with him over uh, over All Star break. He was down here in Florida, and I'm like, hey, he's a, he's a top 10, 15 player in the league. I'm like, Brady, you got to stop fighting, man. Like, the, I know you're tough. He's a big, strong kid. He can throw his hands. Uh, I'm like, you got to stop fighting, man. Like you. Their team's in last place. He's like, oh, I can't, I can't shut it off. And probably the reason why he is who he is. And, you know, I'm here talking to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you get to playoff season as a defenseman, how much does it suck knowing that you now have to get in front of every puck? Is there like a something in your head that flips and you're like, all right, now everything, every, every single one that I stayed on my feet for, I'm going to have to get on the ground and take one to the knee, take one to the shin, take one to the ankle. Like, do, do you just dread that? Yeah, that that and and going back for pucks because especially as a as an offensive defenseman, teams would you know they dump it in your corner and they're just trying to get trying to get licks on you and it's it's the worst. It's especially that first game. You're like, okay, you got to prepare for battle. Um, you know, you're basically playing hockey without a puck the first couple games. Teams are so fired up to get the the playoffs started. I, th I think the first round of playoffs is probably the best round. Um, you know, teams are, are flying around trying to kill each other. Like you said, blocking shots everywhere. But I always said, like, I, I never asked the goalie to go play the power play for me. Um, you know, he should never ask me to block the puck. Ooh, That's a fair I point. like that. That's a fair point. He's asking you to do his job for him. Yeah, yeah. I like that. But, but it's not really the goalies, it's more the coaches. Yeah, they're definitely – was there times when you wouldn't get down for a puck and they, you get reamed out afterwards being like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Like, the analytics for that. See, uh, see, if I were a coach before the playoffs, I would just I would lay down on the ice and be like, "All right, boys, if I can do it, you can do it," and just let the whole team fire on me for like for like ten minutes and be like, "Now go and do it." The lead yeah, from the front. You'd be dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah but would. the guys would be fired up. They'd be fired up. Yeah, yeah that would that would be a, a good tactic. Maybe if you're like down three games to to one or something like that, doing that by a coach would be like. But a lot of the coaches are are guys that were shot blockers, guys that were out there um, giving it their all, and all the players know that too. So when they're asking you to do it, and you knew that they did it, it's tough to to you know not kind of sack up and do it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And they probably did it in an era with when you know they had less pads on. Yeah, I don't know. The pa the pads have always been like like you, every time you get hit with a puck you feel it and unless you get hit in the foot when you have the shot blockers on it kind of just gra grazes off your foot then you don't really feel it too much but anytime you get hit with a puck in the foot or it, it, it always finds the area with no equipment and um or i shouldn't say always i'd say 70 percent of the time you're you're getting full impact of the puck just on your bare skin which is the absolute worst yeah that sounds awful uh i was reading something the other day about how coaches they don't use their uh their challenge where they can like say hey that guy's got a, a fucked up stick he's got too much curve on his stick coaches don't do that ever even though it's basically a free penalty every single night if they wanted to do it and are they not doing that because everybody everybody cheats and they know that they have guys on their team that do it too is th is that even a rule anymore the uh, illegal curve i think so yeah really um yeah, I would say, I mean, the the way guys' curves are nowadays, I'd say over 50% of the league, if there is a, a legal curve, um, everyone's, uh, I would imagine, if it, if it's the same of what it used to be, there used to be like the silver thing that you put up against it um, that measured it. If, but I can't imagine that, they, that it's still a rule or why people aren't using it. But it, it's probably the same thing, like you said, because – you know, you have access to other teams' room. Your trainers are going in there. You could go in and, and measure a guy's stick before a game and, and kind of, uh, you know, know exactly what you're going into. But, yeah, that that's uh, – I, I wonder when the last time that that was called. I, I know the famous one with the Marty McSorley. And yeah. I think he was in L.A. at the time. 
Um, but yeah, I, I wonder what the last one was. Yeah, because yeah, the thing I was reading was saying that coaches don't do it because it's like a, an unwritten rule. Gentleman game. game. Yeah, where maybe you're yeah. pointing the finger at them. You got some going on at your own end. But yeah, nobody does it anymore. And it seems like it's a free penalty if you want it. Yeah, maybe now if people hear this, then people will do it in playoffs. That's, But that is one of the good things about the NHL. And I saw it the other night. Did you guys see the guy in Ottawa scored the empty net goal? And then yes. just rushed him. That's my favorite part about the NHL, how it just polices itself. Like, imagine in football, if you do something stupid and a 400-pound lineman, you know he's going to come and just rip your head off. Like, you're probably not going to do it. Yeah. So the way, the way that the game polices itself is amazing. Um, you yeah. Know, it, and, and probably with the coaches not doing that, it's probably just out of uh, – out of respect. Yeah, for people who missed it, it was an empty deck goal. It was like 4-2, and then uh, there was like five seconds left. And was it an Ottawa player who just took a yeah. slap shot from like five feet away on an empty net goal and scored with like no time left? And he just got absolutely bum-rushed immediately. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. And the worst part is you have your goalie pulled, so you got one more player than the other team out there. So no matter what, this guy's getting hands put on him by someone, even if you, your whole team comes in, which Ottawa did. But, uh, you know, there, there's two guys on that guy who, who shot it into the net and caused that havoc. Yeah, that was great. All right, so, Yans, yeah, it's been awesome. I have one last question. It's a rowback question. com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Roback.com, the best golf stuff out there. Uh, go get it right now. Roback.com, promo code TAKE. All right, so, Yans, you are um, in the Dozen Trivia League. You are on one of the worst teams ever. Very entertaining, but very bad at trivia. So I wanted very to test your trivia and give you a question and see uh, how you're doing, how, how the mind's coming along, okay? You ready? Right. It's an it's easy one. Celebrity mashup. Yeah, no, it's an easy <laughs> one, all right? Keith Yandel, you scored how many goals and had how many assists in your NHL career? <laughs> we should do. We do an over under. His niche should we? Should, someone else should do a niche. We should have KB like learn all of Yan's stats and have that be a niche because he could dominate. Come on. I think, I think goals. I'm pretty sure I got a hundred or or. I want to say 100 or just over 100. Well, we need a number. I'm going to go 102. 102. Eh. 103 was the correct answer. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty damn good. You were pretty close. Yeah. And then assist. You get, you get like a plaque for the assist. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Maybe 450. Oh, no. You sold yourself short on both. 516 on assists. All right. Take yeah. That. What about penalty minutes? Oh God! Um, penalty minutes. Get, hmm. uh, Let's see if we can find this stat. I'm not good at math. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna go. I don't know if I can find it. Four hundred. Yeah, exactly correct. <laughs> Come on. No, no, six hundred sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know Keith Yandel stats might not be the the niche category for the dozen for you. No, I have no idea. <laughs> That's actually way cooler, though, to be like, I think it was like a little over 100. Yeah, not, I, I would absolutely know exactly how many goals I scored in the NHL. Yeah. For sure. 103 on the dot. Well, <laughs> I, wish, I wish it was a lot more. Yeah. I, I wasn't listening to the guys in the stands yelling, shoot. Yeah, you should have. You should have. Um, all right. Well, Yance, thanks as always, man. This has been awesome. Uh, we got to get you. We got to get you in the Chicago office, maybe for the start of playoffs. I know we're going to do a big stream. It'd be good to get you here. You think you can? You, you think you can handle one of these like forty-one free throw streams? That was impressive that you guys got that done. I don't know how you did that. The, um, the one we're talking about might be like Biz and Went want to do like a uh, like post stream. Like you got to hit, you got to hit like thirty posts in a row or something. Thirty in a row, but you get the same thing, the mulligan. Yeah, but and then you got to add me and Dave doing it too, which is going to be impossible. Yeah, you guys wouldn't get more than one in a row. Yeah, so uh, we might need you. Biz wouldn't get more than one in a row. <laughs> would Wit? Yeah, yeah. Wit, Wit would probably go, what was the max you could do? Ten for you guys? Yeah, ten. He could do ten in a row easy? Yeah, once you get once you get on a uh, – does it matter? Like if you shoot and then miss, do you keep going or no? No, you have to then get on – well, we, you could keep going, yeah, if you want, if you, but it only counts the makes, yeah. 
yeah, I think I think once you got on a roll, you could get pretty hot uh, hitting those. You could easily do ten in a row. Okay. Uh, I don't think Biz could. Biz would maybe get two or three. It would be just fun seeing the two of them just like once you get to like hour twelve. You think Whitney the, would be able to do like quit a, a two day stream nonstop? Yeah, the quit factor. We might need nope. you because you're a dog. Yeah, you you'd be you'd be in with the boys for the for as long as it took. What about bringing in goalies? Like bringing in fifty goalies and just. <laughs> rotating them you know every 30 <laughs> shots and you got to score a certain amount because the post is yeah i like that going against real goalies yeah that would be good and yeah you yeah, just think, keep rotating how many high school or not even high school, college kids that listen to your guys' show like you would have a line out the door of goalies ready to go that would be fun what, what about me and big cat so neither one of us play hockey uh but if you gave us like a 20 foot wrister against an NHL goalie, how many goals do you think we could score if we took, like, 100 shots? Zero. No, Zero? I'd score I know. one. I, yeah, I'd I get, score I get one. one. Top cheddar. 20 foot? Knuckle puck, bitch. Yeah. 15 <laughs> I, foot. I don't, no, 50, no. Maybe if you had, like, a breakaway, one could flip over a puck, but you would, not, you know. I, I wouldn't – if I had 100 shots on a goalie just straight away, no screen from 20 feet away, I, I don't think I'd score more than – Three. Well, that sounds like we got a new challenge. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I could challenge. Do it. Yeah. I'm different though. I'm ready. Uh, all right. Well, Yans, thanks. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you coming on. Um, I love that you don't have a computer. N never change. Never change that. Okay. I won't. I <laughs> promise you, I will never ever get a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Talk to you later, man. See you, man. All right. Thanks. Keith Yandel was brought to you by. Mountain Dew Baja Blast, baby. That's what I'm opening right now. All the boys drink Baja Blast. Hank spilled a little bit. That's okay. That was a bad throw by you. That's Mountain Dew. But a great drink. What do you mean a bad throw? It oh, my connected God, it's it. the you best. You caught it. You it forgot that best. it was fizzy. You forgot that things that were shaken up gets fizzy. Uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast is the best, and they want football fans to have a blast. A Mountain Dew Baja Blast, that is. I know firsthand that having a blast can be as simple as cracking open a Mountain Dew Baja Blast anytime, anywhere doesn't matter where you are if you're watching the game if you're at a game if you're at home on the couch nothing like it i like a nice I, you know what i really enjoy is like an italian sandwich with an ice cold mountain dew Ooh. baja blast for lunch Love that it. to me is mountain dew baja blast is the best lunch drink in america maybe of all time yes mountain nice. dew baja blast the taco bell fan favorite is now available all year long in stores nationwide for the first time making having a blast easier than ever here's a here's a crazy idea i just thought of what about a Baja float? Oh, you put like a scoop of ice cream in there. Yeah, I would. I would eat I that. I like it. It's the best soda. Maha, Mountain Dew Baja Blast in stores now. Check it out. Hey Max, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. You want one? I'll take two. Well, you didn't <laughs> get it, dude. I said you want one. Well, I was gonna take two, but I had two in my hand. Yeah, well, because that's one to you. Yeah. This no, actually is. No. Uh, this is maybe the one soda that, like, if you drink two, you are. That just means you're the smartest man alive. Yeah, that's a fact. All right. We'll finish up the show, life after football. So, Jake, you have a list? Yeah, so last year, around this time, we did a segment, Hobbies the Boys Will Pick Up Now That Football Is Over. <laughs> Love it. And I will this say, Hank was not on this list because I think he stayed in Arizona for vacation. Yeah, you were on vacation. Show. I remember Smart. that show. <laughs> yeah. We had a talk with Yandel about, because uh, we were said on the show, Biz canceled because he was sick, and then I hit up Whitney, and he was on a boat or golf. And he was like, yeah, Whitney, all he does is vacation. Is that just a situate thing? It's a beach town. It's it's the Irish Riviera. It's beautiful, beautiful ocean vibes. So, Hank, do you have anything that you would have put on this list? What was the what was the prompt? Hobbies the boys will pick up now that football is over, but 365 days ago. Yeah, what would you have done last year? I mean, golf. Okay, yep. All right. All right, well, I'm pleased to say that a lot Get of these were accomplished. Pack. Okay. They were PFT. accomplished? Yes. Okay, let's see. PFT, your first bullet. Break 120 in golf. Nice. Boom. Easy. You did three quarters of that. Done. This okay. week. Well, I, I got 90. It's not breaking 90. True, but pretty much three quarters. Everyone, Everyone's goal when they start playing golf is to break 91, mm -hmm. and I did yeah. that. Uh, PFT, get a word of the day calendar. Unfortunately, <laughs> I did not do that. Okay. And lastly, PFT, run a marathon and not tell anyone. Well, yeah. So um, no, you did that. If, if I <laughs> if I did run a marathon, I'm going to continue not to tell anybody. Yeah. That's that's going on this year's list. All right. Uh, okay. Big cat. Yeah. Be a dad more. Yeah. 
You did that. Yeah. Hell yeah. You got 365 more days of dadding in. Yeah. I mean, I added another son. So how could I not be a dad? More? Right. Microdose more mushrooms. Th- yep. I've mm-hmm. done that multiple times. Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. Max and I are going to do that. We got to get back on our plan. Man. I was just talking to Max <laughs> know, today, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Max are going to work out tomorrow. Yeah, we got to get back. Oh, you already ditched me. I didn't. I, yeah, he said, are you going to work out tomorrow? I said, yes. Okay, you ditched me. That's fine. Uh, we have three <laughs> bullets for a Billy football. Oh, this should be good. <laughs> if we hit it hard starting now, we can actually be in a good spot for summer. We can, yeah. Good point, I Hank. had that thought. I'm going to hit it hard. The last I'm couple a, weeks I'm were a, tough. I'm in a bad spot now. I'm going to hit it so hard. Uh, uh, hard. Billy. I might have sold the video where I have to learn how to dunk, too, so that's actually something I have to do. That's cool. But not in in reality. What? In theory. Wait, you're going to be able to dunk? They're like, oh, we're, you know, what are some ideas? I was like, oh, I could learn, I could learn how to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, you and can't. Then, you and then, it's not like learning how to ride a bike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's practicing vertical leap. I training. Don't know if you physically have you ever got rim? Yes, on the court when I was like 17. But the ball makes it so much harder. How tall you are, are you? You more likely to get six pack, which is never going to happen, than dunk. Why not both? Okay, why not both? They, I've, been, I've been waiting, what, three years on the six-pack? Yeah. I guess <laughs> we found out Hank's hobby for football okay. offseason. Hank right. had a dunk. Yeah, I've got the dunk shoes, the uh, the isometric ones. I would love for you to dunk. Men's ball. Okay. I have to try. I'll bet you $10,000 you can't do it by the end of the year. Yeah, I'll match. What do I? Okay. Men's ball, 10 You have to give us here. 10 grand back, not 20. So 20 to 10. So five we'll give and you five. twenty, you give us ten. Seven and a half. That's so eight, that's, that's eight, crazy. Four and four, eight. All right, deal. All okay, right, deal. deal. It was just it was just whatever money we wanted. <coughs> Men's basketball. Ten foot rim. Yeah. In this office. Yeah. Yeah. This is the stupidest thing you've ever like. There's it's impossible. How tall are you? Six. <laughs> We didn't ask how old you were. I think. It was, okay, yeah, no, it was. I like. I literally said like it was probably a future me thing, but this is. Okay, wait, wait, similar wait, wait. category. Now keep everything running. Keep everything running, Max. You talk about your vacation real quick. <coughs> hey, it, PFT and I and Hank are gonna go watch how close he gets to the rim. We'll come right back. We we'll take like ten seconds. Talk about your vacation. The three of you, the booth talk. All right, uh, Max, how was your vacation? Uh, my vacation was great, Hank. I've actually been wanting to say this take. Hank goes to San Diego a lot. He has family out there, and he gets a lot of shit about wanting to move to San Diego. The place is unbelievable. Yeah. It's the most— It's like a playground. It's the most beautiful place on earth. Like, I don't—I, like, hung out with a lot of people that were there, and I couldn't understand how, like, people can, like, have a normal day there. Oh, and they're back. It's just sunny every day. Okay, we're back. Uh, What was the result? We're going to dunk. So I was. He um, actually PFT. We screwed up because like what we inches. should we should have done it. The only the only regret I have with this bet is we should have made uh, all parties put the money in like an interest account because like eight thousand is not going to be the same amount of money next year. That's true. You know, in seven months. I, Thanks, Biden. I think this is the same category as Hank's pole vaulting take. Yeah, I mean uh, it's just not going to happen. So, so Hank, I I said the exact same thing when I was thirty. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how to dunk. I have. <laughs> I said literally the exact same thing. You're you're welcome to go ahead, Hank. And it's it's go ahead. very hard have at a this stage. Seven inch advantage. <laughs> you know, seven. You inches. had to know that was coming. You can't say Hank is Hank is more likely to dunk than you. At at my peak, when I was like 18 years old, I was able to grab the rim with my fingertips. That wasn't a bad baseline. I'm on zero training. Yeah, I know, but you're not gonna dunk. What if I just go hard? Okay. Well, if, if you go hard, you get $20,000. So you're going to you're gonna have to, one, lose weight, it will and, then, the and then two, cheese. get stronger. Yeah. No, I know. I know. I Listen. It will come out of the part of my cheese. Believe. I, all I need is some people to believe. I know there's going to be a lot of haters, a lot of doubters, and that's fine. You have no reason to believe. But for the ones that do, buy in now, and, and maybe I'll split the money with you. Oh, oh. you're going to sell stock. Just, yeah. What does that mean? Just people have to show you support, and then you're like, yes. I'll give you money? Yeah. Consistent support. You know what, I'll, I'll Hank? I think you okay. can do it. I think you can do it. All right, I I, I would <laughs> like to match uh, anyone who shows consistent hate towards Hank. 
and really bashes him, you will also maybe get involved in the money that we're going to win. Here's what we'll do. We'll <laughs> just we'll, every day just be like, there's no chance, you fucking idiot. We'll sell a heavily discounted shirt <laughs> when Hank can't do it that yeah. just says Hank couldn't do it. Yeah, Hank couldn't do it. December 31st. Wait, no, I thought we said beginning of football season. End of the year. No, 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 no. I'll give him no, the end no. of the year. said end of this year. We could give him the next 10 football seasons. Yeah, why Yeah, why don't we give you the end of the, your 30s? Uh, what about steroids? Yeah, you can use steroids. Go for it. I'm going to do it all. That's the thing. You can use steroids, but you have to share with us. All right. Okay. Winnie. That's fine. As long as he shares, mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. I'm due. I'm due. I'm, I'm, I'm due to. I'm due part? to follow up on one of these things and make it happen. Okay, put it that way. <laughs> I don't think this is the one. <laughs> That's some Billy football logic right there. You're due. And if I can do this, six pack will be come with it. So that should be a double. I should get a, a incentive. Okay. What if I'll give you an extra incentive? If, if I dunk shirtless with my can't six pack dunk, bulging. If you can't dunk, I'll give you uh, three chances to go perfect from a uh, three-point contest. And if you get that, then you get the money. Okay. That was smart by me because now he's going to, like, halfway through not training, he's going to be like, maybe he'll I'll just train really my good. three-pointers <laughs> and he'll stop training yeah. to dunk. <laughs> that works. So three t- three times through, you'd have to make 25 three-pointers in a row. Yeah, that'll never happen. All right, we'll say, we'll say 20. That is four, so four much more right. likely to happen than you dunking. Yes. Why are you... Uh, that just made me mad that you were like that. That will never happen. But dunking will, because you don't understand his mindset right now, dude. Man. He's a guy. I yeah. have chicken Hank's, like like no like. Hank's mind. He's like all I have to do is just hit the gym, and then when I'll be do able you think to do you're it. You're gonna train. When does training start? Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not tomorrow. All right. What what else do we have? Oh, we Billy's have the, hobbies. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never trained my legs. I have chicken legs, and I basically just touch rim. So you're just an untapped resource. Yes. You did not basically just touch rim. Pretty much. Uh, no. <laughs> like six inches away. Yeah. And you would then have to go another. Like it has to be a clean dunk. No, like getting the ball to the rim and like having it just fall in. You have to actually dunk. Your hands have to be all the way over and dunk. Okay, I'm, I'm reviewing the tape right now, Hank. You are about, I'd say your fingertips are a good five and a half inches. I know exactly what that looks like. So that's from like the rim. another foot of vertical leap you need. You need, yeah, about another foot to get up there. Work to be done. Okay. Can't wait to get to work. Billy's hobbies that he'll pick up now that football season is over from last year. Not get too deep into conspiracies. Okay. Oh, he failed that one. Failed. Big time. Listen to macro dosing. Don't get suspended. Okay, failed. Uh, yeah, yeah, failed that. And the Jets project. Is that the quarterbacks thing? Didn't he already do that? I think he – Yeah, he did. Was there a different Jets oh, project? Did he, do, did he just say that after he had finished it? Maybe. That would be very Billy. Uh, Finish the Jets project? Me, competitive pickleball. Did that check? Max cook more. Max, rip. I've been ripping cooking ever since I moved to Chicago and never get takeout. Only cook. You're basically the bear. Yep, basically. You're the yes, bear. Chef. If it was just about yeah, like, but the uh, the the fat hairy version of bear. Yeah, I basically yeah, I basically just make chicken and rice. But it's like at home, like Mexican bowls. I do it like every week though. Every once a week we're cooking. Yeah, we're cooking. I, I love that. that for you. And then finally, memes get physical. Okay, <laughs> it, it memes did you get physical? It was get a physical. Oh, oh yeah, get a physical. Oh. <laughs> and uh, that's a physical man. Uh, Still need one. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, listeners submitted ones. Memes. I got Hank. It. Hank's focused on dunking. Twenty three pointers in a row, Hank, and you're out. You guys really don't. Yeah, whatever. He's gonna I probably can't. Shooting threes, <laughs> like by Thursday, you're gonna see him just doing the racks. Well, no, I'm just gonna have to. Whatever, whatever. If you believe, well, Hank, you got to make a decision because if you no, I'm if dunking. You, if I'm you dunking. work your legs, your dunk. three point shot might get jacked. I up. I will dunk on you. A basketball in a game. Oh, oh, in now, a now game. This is way different. In a game, pick 31 winners. PMT gets a team to select NFL teams in Madden. Select a day and have a fantasy draft and host an entire season that each person runs their team. Can either play each week or sim. No. I don't even know what I'm reading. It's just we're we're trying to would, do another football. Would be season. good content during that draft. Oh, this is a week- suggestion for us. Yeah, yeah. These no. are suggestions for us. All right. I did that in high school. It was fun. My friends and I live in North Carolina. Sounds like a blast. 
<laughs> and have been following the immaculate stingray pregnancy. Yes. That's the Cindy Sweeney movie. Yes. This got me thinking, what if Jesus does come back every 2,000 years but in form of different animals? We have been stuck on this and have been rewriting scriptures from the perspective of different animals. Didn't think it would be this bad one week with no football. Whoa. What animal do you think would have the biggest impact if they had a Jesus? Dog. Easy. As always, yeah. fuck Hank, go Dukes. Ah, uh, cat. I feel like cats would, they would like all follow their Jesus like hardcore. Well, cats cat, can like gang up. Cat cat people. No, but cats themselves, they they, they could gang up. Uh, no, they would just uh, fight. Cat, they would just end up they're, fighting. They're solitary animals. Yeah, but dogs. Dogs, dogs, you just throw a tennis ball and the whole plane goes. Wolves. Oh, shit. Yeah, it becomes like the alpha wolf, the king of kings. No, but I'm saying no he's wolves. saying wolves. Wolves, he's yeah. Wolves saying would be wolves. good. Yeah. Or bird. Yeah. A bird. Pigeons. Just everybody flies behind it. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, boys? Welcome back. I'm in my second year out of college in a new city where I don't have many guy friends. So I filled my weekend this fall with as much football as I could. Now that it's over, I am suffering extreme withdrawal. So much that I bought the new Madden game just to have football on my TV. Even if I was the one creating the football, I'm worried that my weekends this spring summer will be a vortex of nothingness. I'm planning on getting a golf membership to my local course this summer. Smart. Smart. Nine handicap, no big deal. But I'm open to potential other hobbies to keep myself from playing 36 holes five days a week. Any ideas? Love you guys. Uh, start drinking more. Just drink, just become just walk. a raging alcoholic. Walk. Yeah. Like, he, do you have a girlfriend? Just walk. If not, you could find a girlfriend. Sydney Sweeney single? I don't think she is. Oh, fuck. That was the whole big controversy. Are what? you sure? Yeah, with the other guy when they were promoting their rom com. Oh man, hmm. I'm gonna need a minute. She's been lying to me. That sucks. I I know she, you. Uh, maybe wait, she is. she's engaged. Yeah. What? Good for her. Every time she's working, she says she's working on a movie. Can't come over. Uh huh. I know what this guy's going through because this morning I just I thought I just like sat down. And I was like, what if the Rams played the Seahawks this weekend? And I made a line for it. Yeah. And I had Rams minus two and a half. Where? Uh, in Seattle. Oh, I would hammer the – oh, no, the Rams minus two and a half. Yeah. It's a good line. Yeah, it's a good line. It's a good line. I also had uh, Vegas at Carolina. Ugh. And that was Vegas minus three. Starting quarterback. On the Aiden road. Aiden O'Connell? Aiden O'Connell, Bryce Young. But remember, they got Canales. Yeah. You wrote a cuck book. I'll end with this one. Probably the best uh, suggestion we've ever had. Learn I how to dunk. Idea for what to do while football is gone. Fully commit to an off-season training program. Conditioning, weights, study film, drilling plays, whole nine yards. I like that. Like, pretend that you're going to be a linebacker. Or like a shooting guard. Who can well, dunk? He's talking about, but he's talking about football. Yeah. Uh, fully commit to an off-season training program. Including what? Conditioning, weights, studying film, drilling plays, the whole nine yards. Oh, I, could okay. be basketball. So I guess it could be basketball. Could be, basketball. Could be golf, too. It could be golf. Yeah. Okay, I like that one. Alternate idea, fully committing to get in the worst shape of your life and see how unhealthy you can get all the way through preseason and then commit to getting in shape next year. That'll work. I like the sound of that. We've always talked about meeting in the middle. Yeah. What are you at now? I'm at like two... Two something? Yeah. Two and change? Would meeting it's in the two middle... two dot, dot, dot. Do you think meeting in the middle would be approximately 210 pounds? How much do you weigh? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't been on a scale in a while. I think 180... It might have to be a little higher than that. I could get up to like 215, 220. Yeah. I'm about to get in shape. Chef Donnie's about to. I'm, I just gave him my credit card. I was like, make me food. If anyone wants to get on the meal plan. Sure. I'm in. I'm I'm going to be in. Well, you guys got to give him your credit cards too. I'll just take it. I'll say it's a. I'll, okay. We'll take it out of your time. I will. I, I told him to just get a big bowl and have hard boiled eggs in there at all times. That sounds like a, a <laughs> recipe for disaster. So anyone who wants hard-boiled eggs, hit me up. I'm going to be flush with hard-boiled eggs. If they get a bar for everything else, why not just an egg bar? You get, you get the egg, and then you get, like, chives, salt, pepper, bacon bits. Yeah. Are you talking about just an omelet bar? Yeah, yeah egg bar. <laughs> hard-boiled. I'm talking about egg. <laughs> You're talking about an omelet station. No, this is completely different. It's hard-boiled eggs, but you get all the shit that goes in an omelet, <laughs> and you just put it on the egg, and it's way healthier. This is going to be a big Google. What? <laughs> Wait, what? What, what, what was that? What is that sentence? This is going to be a big Google? Or is what? this a, a question from a listener that you're looking up? or is What it are you doing? Egg related. We're on a podcast, Hank. How long to learn how to dunk? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I, I suspect there are a few variables that go into that. A one. couple, I would say. One, have you ever dunked before? Two, how old are you? Three, do you have chicken legs? Four, are you delusional? Like I think delusional is good. I agree. Yeah, sure. But yeah, there's uh like LeBron James's daughter's gonna dunk before you. Just oh, think easily, about that. Easily, yes. Fuck. Couple variables. It wasn't like an easy answer. No, of course not. Uh Okay. I read it said I would like three months so I can impress some people in school after summer. This guy sounds like my type of guy. In school, like top high comment. School? No way to tell, and it's going to be different for everyone. If you can just grab rim, then you're six to eight inches away from dunking off the dribble. Oh yeah, so you're about so that much in three months is not going to happen. I would say a year if you get hella lucky. Uh huh. If not, then like a year. And, and a you're half. not you're not you're grabbing about rim. Six inches away from grabbing rim. So add five to eight inches on top of that. So that's another ten years it's over. Over a foot, so yeah. Maybe I, when you're 50? I'd say by 40. You can probably dunk by the time you're 40. 40. Uh, okay. I also think we should bring back That's What She Said Yeah. in 2024. I feel like that's been, it's been out of the lexicon for a while. It always plays, though. Yeah. Always plays. Always. Uh, okay. We ready? Good show, boys. Uh, numbers. 40. 3. 20. My, my future vert. 18. 8. 99 pug. Oh, I was going to do 99, but I wasn't going to do that to you, pug. Uh, I will do 77. Do we have a ball in there? No. We're clean. Fifty-seven. 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 Yeah, I saw that, Max. You're a little nervous. Love you guys.